Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Tyler. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good. I'm enjoying your YouTube issues over here. Uh, everybody, Vince is the reason we're late. It's true. Tom's not here. <laughs> no, no, it's completely my fault. So let me explain. Before the show started, I was trying to very quickly put up the Twitter post for it. This is at like three minutes before we start. And I had the wrong keyboard. I have multiple computers in front of me. I picked up the wrong keyboard and I typed. And I, I typed like control or like shift S-H-O, like show start soon. But instead what it did over on the computer that it was connected to where I had the actual YouTube up is now it looks all dumb. I don't know what else to say. The YouTube video looks dumb. It's now a big full screen. There's no frame around it. It's just a big black edge with a black search bar up top. And then the chat is like a little pop out over on the right side as opposed to just being in a normal YouTube window. And I really hate it. And I spent this whole time trying to fix it. And I can't fix it. And it's making me very, 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 very angry. Because I just hit a couple of buttons and now YouTube is ruined. So there's where I'm living. Anyways, how you doing, Tyler? I'm great, man. I am good. Maybe somebody in the comments will, or the chat here. Nope, it's Tom's fault. Let's stay consistent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm good, buddy. Uh, all right. Well, hey, we've got <laughs> we've got a fun thing lined up tonight. We're gonna do a little AMA. We're gonna we're gonna answer questions. We're gonna we're gonna have to rapid fire some of them. No, no opining. Uh, but like, if anybody knows what I did, by the way, hitting like Control. Yeah, thank you, Alt F4. Very funny. Um, you know, th please, please tell me. I am open to suggestions. Uh, at any rate, let's start with some news. How about that? Absolutely. All right. Yeah, we're gonna have to burn through some of this stuff quick because my God, we got a lot of questions. Rumor engine. It's an axe. It's nice to have a rumor engine that we might actually be able to guess. I mean, of course, first thought: Fire Slayer's axe. I was thinking, Go Trek. Is this Fire Slayer's axe? Is it something else? It's it's not F11, you... everybody. By the way, it's not full screen. The YouTube player went into like i can still see it it's not full screen if i know what f11 is i hit that it goes it still goes out farther it literally changed the youtube player and i don't know what it did at any rate mm. please continue fire slayers is that what we're looking at here buddy i don't think so is my honest answer i, so. I really don't okay. um i don't know what it is oh i fixed it i fixed it tyler i just couldn't fix it oh. in the preview mode it had switched to theater mode from default oh. view. Thank God. Was it? All right. Was it F11? It was F11. It was not F11. It? No, it was not. <laughs> it was theater mode. Okay. Theater. All right. And that button isn't there when it's in preview. So somehow I figured out the keyboard oh, okay. commands to turn on theater mode, but there was, but that button did not exist to turn it back. So, anyways. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mike, Kath, Cathcart, and Peppo. Thank you both. All right. At any rate, yeah, I think it looks more like mm. a. I, I don't know. I think it's an old world axe or mm. something like that is my honest answer. Um, yeah. The simple, it's a very simple design, very simple, clean design. I mm. think it's an old world dwarf character. That's my thought. All right. Right on. Works yeah. for me. Yep. Okay. Up next, we've got a fancy dark oath army box. So, yeah, there's a history on this show of something like called it or nailed it, sure, which is impossible, impossible to resist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, think back of the thousands of things that we say on the show and the one out of a thousand times that we get something right. And you just you feel compelled there's the, to, to, to take credit. Right. So anyway, I just wanted to, to make note of that. Not necessarily complete that thought but yeah somebody may have said something about this tyler this there's was two easy. ways to hit a bullseye in <laughs> a target you can just you can train your whole life right uh -huh. really practice and then make that yeah. one perfect shot or uh -huh. you can just fire like a thousand arrows that's that's, that's the policy here yeah <laughs> yeah uh, so no, we... i've got the box yeah. set up here so this is our new army set this is so, so let's lay down some basics We've got yeah. five uh, Dark Oath Horsemen, Marauder Horsemen. We've got 20 uh, Marauders. We have the Chieftain on horse, as well as this new, what's he called? Wild Brinding or something like that. Like uh, our mm. Korgorath number two, a big weird monster that this is going to be the box that exists in. And then we'll, and then we'll probably all forget oh, about yeah. it. But at any rate, <laughs> this is the Dark Oath Korgorath. And yeah, 
Wilder Fiends. Wilder yeah. Fiend, there you go. I, I knew Wilder I was in, Fiend. like, kind of the ballpark. But, yeah. okay, these are the replacements for Marauders and Marauder Horsemen. Um, yep. These are the AOS new replacements for those things. Good. Those models mm. were trash. Um, unfortunately, they, they, they have to go back to, like, the old world where they where they will still continue to be garbage <laughs> back there. But they can be garbage along with a lot of other old garbage models, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I think that a lot of these models individually are really cool. I love that you've got some really nice design. They're very dynamic. They've got motion. They're everything we would want out of AOS models. Uh, they do look like they're on bigger bases, like 28 mils or 32s or something mm. like that. Probably 28s. Um, and I love the haircuts and the, the, I love that you've got like male and female Dark Oath Warriors yeah. in both the riders yes. and the people on foot. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's really cool. Um, um, they all, and, and like a lot of the faces are really expressive. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't bring up and save the individual faces because it's one of those little spinny wheel things that doesn't save the images on the, on the site, you know? Sure. But they were, um, but they were like super, uh, you know, quality faces. You see the sculptors actually like getting some good looking female faces and stuff like that. So, all of that's mm -hmm. fine. And my final answer is I don't care at all. <laughs> I don't like Dark Oath as a concept. Yeah. I really don't. It's like not what gets me going when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, um, there we go. When it comes Slaves. to uh, mm -hmm. Slaves to Darkness, yeah. Like I've just yeah. I'm a fan of the classic like Iron Wall kind of look. I like Chaos Warriors, sure. Chaos Knights, stuff like that. Um, the, right. the rampaging barbarians has just like always been something that fell completely flat on me. Like this stopped being a thing when people invented guns. Guns should stop <laughs> this. <laughs> sure. But yeah. Well, it seems like there are quite a few people excited for this that are out there. I know some of my friends are. So one of my friends been yeah looking forward to creating a dark oath forever. So I'm glad to see that. I love the horses. The horses feel bulky and like a good size. I don't know. That's one thing yeah, I yeah. felt with some of the best horse horses horse models. Uh, but yeah, these these feel like well proportioned relative to the riders. So kind of a minor nerdy thing, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, very very cool to see this. Yep. So like for me, these are really great sculpts. This is top notch work from mm. excellent sculptors at the top of their game, doing some of the best work they've done. That just like I don't care. <laughs> that just isn't for me, <laughs> right? That's sure. that's that's all. I do not think they're bad. To be clear, I think they're actually really good. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Good stuff. All right. uh, Iron Shake says, Vince, I remember a Warcry set a while back with barbarians versus some spider looking people. Are those barbarian models related to these barbarians? Yes, they are all Dark Oath people. Um, as well as the Dark Oath War Chief and War Queen, like going all the way back to the that that War Chief, I think he was the first one we had. He came out of Silver Tower. That's what this all comes out of. And now finally mm -hmm. the, the Dark Oath promise has been fulfilled. So there you go. Cool. That's a uh, good note by ready to write, ready to roll. I like this box. It's basically an exact mirror to the COS box. Twenty infantry, five calf, calf hero, special single model. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. And obviously, yeah, the they calf talked hero about this as a dark counter to the cities of Sigmar. Like literally, that's in the the article. Nice. Yeah. And so you know, it's good to get all those old models replaced. So when we get our uh, relaunch of of S two D and in fourth ed, you know, we'll have now actually like we don't have to just purposely kind of make these units bad so no one ever takes them or buys them. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. All right. Next up. Yeah. Okay. We've got Don Bringer's book five coming out. So the they... shadow of the crown. Yeah. <laughs> had a had an article today with a lot of rules, including the war scroll on the crone lady. So that was good to see. She looks good. I know we're, we'll probably hold off on talking in depth about her mm -hmm. until we actually the show, but yeah, man, she's, she's fitting that utility hero type to a two T. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Seems interesting enough. I I don't know what to think about her because the problem I have, Tyler, is that this mm. lady does not like all of the things that I seem to like. That sure. is to say, like, I am a fan of things like snakes and Marathi stuff and things like that, and that doesn't really seem yeah. like what she's all about, right? She's more about, yeah. like, Doomfire Warlocks, don't like them. The regular Witch Elves and stuff, don't like them. So... I you know I think she's cool, but uh, mm. I'm 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 in the end I'm I'm on Team Marathi so you know, <laughs> sure there you go yeah 
Yeah, well, I mean, it seems to be going the direction that some of these newer releases have, you know, like Balthanos, opening up new pathways to play the army. And that was certainly an opportunity to, to do that here with sure. her, with the, the ones you just mentioned, right, that you don't see a whole lot. We haven't seen hordes of witch elves in quite some time sure. uh, doing well on the, or competing cauldrons on the Cauldrons or so. whatever, right, because she clearly wanted to be near cauldrons and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a couple of people here and there that that have been doing it, but but pretty rare. So, you know, yeah, I dig I'm the model. I agree with you. I like opening up more, more, uh, you know, interesting alternatives and army builds and stuff within forces. And yeah. I think characters like this help do that. So I'm I'm very supportive of it. Again, just sat, this is like the not for me week, right? Like sure. all things that I like conceptually, and I'm here and I support. They're just not right. for me personally, but that's okay. I can separate the two and still say I'm glad they exist. Yep. Uh, Stuart mentioned new multiplayer mode. I think might be referring to siege mode that they talked a little bit about. So yeah, excited to see that. And yeah, we're getting some other alternate ways to play. So that's nice. I mean, a little late in the game, but maybe it'll be, you know, foretelling of what we're gonna get at the launch of fourth edition would be nice. It'd be nice. It'd be nice if we realize oh. that more than just uh, one-on-one -on -one <laughs> match play exists. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, like, you okay. know, like it's important. It should be the main yeah. focus of the game, but other things exist too and can help grow sure. your game. So that too. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's next? All right, last, last item, Warhammer World anniversary models you've got on here. Yes. Yes. So, uh, next up we've got the more, more Dark Oath, just in case you... Mm. You didn't get all your Dark Oath. We actually, these are kind of in reverse chronological order, everybody, but this is the way it works. Um, the, but yeah, this was the Dark Oath first revealed. And I'll tell you the thing that made me the most sad about this, uh, Tyler, was just mm. like a week or two weeks ago, I was praising the cool antlers in the rumor engine. Okay. Cause I was yeah. like, neat, we're going to get a deer or some kind of cool like elk model. Right. And then we got this mm. weirdo. This little weird thing. <laughs> this spy versus spy guy here. Okay. Um. So, yeah. Although I do like this warband quite a lot. Again, like, these guys are just, like, yeah. the sculpting on these is really exceptionally <clears throat> cool. Yeah, looks awesome. I haven't seen the Warmer Plus show that featured these guys. Show slash episode. I don't know if there are multiple. If it's a show or just one episode that they're in. Maybe somebody can tell me. But, yeah, I'd like to check that out soon. It's yeah, that's starting to be a theme, right? Mm -hmm. the, all of these various uh, models that are coming out, following you know, Callus and Toll and uh, Neve and the Black Talons. Yeah, so maybe it's a way, yeah, to get more people interested in some of the the story going on, including us. We got called out by Marty Orlando. One of our questions about that on Twitter, I saw. Oh, it's it's in here. Oh. Don't worry. Everybody's <laughs> questions on Twitter up to a certain point in the day, like when I when I grab them all are in here. So yeah, but yeah, yeah. cool looking war man. I, I dig this one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Martin Orlando here. He's in the chat and he asks, do I have a hot take on the poorly proportioned Custodes hero? Sure, here's my hot take. What's 40K? I never heard of it. Okay, so. Uh, all right, good. That's the news. Tyler, let's talk about some uh, yeah. some pick of the week. What, what do you got? What do you want to share with everybody? Picks of the week, thank you. Yes, indeed. Picks. So, <laughs> I mean, it's... I haven't, we haven't shouted out, or at least I haven't shouted out Rob in a little while. Uh, it's easy to take his show for granted that he does every, what, Monday, the Stat Center, right? Reviewing the sure. events from the past weekend. I was watching that yesterday. Just, I love that show. Him going through, you know, the event locations, the list. It's awesome. It's just an amazing thing that he does every week. So I wanted to give him a shout out for that show. We had a good number of events over the past weekend. Lone Star, Matt Taylor, we had him on last year. You know, Matt's event, Lone Star, uh, had a couple of 5-0s there. Thomas Burge that we've had on the show, he went 5-0 with Skaven, with a combined arm Skaven. So it's a pretty neat list. I don't know if you had a chance to see that one. I did not, but I'm I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I'll say that. Kel, Pe Kel I can't remember his last name. Kel went 5-0 with Flesh Eater Quartz. Uh, really interesting list. 2 by 6 Horrors, 6 more Meg Knights, bunch, you know, a couple Arch Regents been awesome to see all these different flesh eater quartz lists that's been showing up you know as people yeah, yeah. are trying out different oh, yeah. things uh so yeah so that's one uh what else i haven't wa i didn't watch the pick slash picks of the week segment last week so i don't know if t i think tom might have shouted out our good buddy doom and darkness he did back. indeed he did indeed 
What what did he shout out? Was it was it the bat rep or was it something the bat different? Rep, yes, the most the the the, the, the at that the, okay. the most recent bat rep. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. I was going to do the exact same thing. It was an amazing, uh, absolutely awesome and fantastic as everything is that that man does. Of course. <laughs> so of course. awesome yeah. and fantastic. Yeah. Uh, great to see him doing content again. Uh, some very unique content as well as for the wargaming community that I've been enjoying. Uh, with with some. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> especially his comments about, uh, you know, sent your way. Let's see. Goonhammer revisiting time, competitive use of clocks. Okay. So this was a second article, and now a series on chess clocks that they've done. And I just recommend it. I've been playing with chess clocks. We've, we haven't got you on chess clocks yet, but it'll happen. Nope, it won't. <laughs> it will not. It will no. not. So anyway, it was a good article. It's a follow-up on one that they did, I don't know, a year or two ago. And yeah, I liked it. So I just want to give Tyler, it a Tyler, you're out. familiar with the statement, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? You've heard this. I am. This old, I've heard that this a few times. saw before now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a chess clock is like two pounds of cure, okay? <laughs> I only need an ounce of prevention. It's called play mm -hmm. armies you can play efficiently, effectively, and quickly. When you play mm -hmm. Suns or Iron Jaws or effective armies that don't dirtle around and do a bunch of nonsense, okay, and sure. have to be like, let me move all my little 800 guys the 0.2 uh -huh. inches to get to exactly the line and spread to exactly <laughs> this point on the objectives. I want to just, I'm going to tow in exactly six people on the six inch line so you can see here, but then the other ones are here. So in a pile in, I can bring exactly this number in, which is more than what you have over here so that we understand Amazing. that if you charge me, I'll be able to pile and bring this many more on. Yeah, cool. Great. I don't care. Shut up. Just move your stuff for the love of everything holy. Just uh -huh. play the game. There, I moved my model. Look at how easy that was, right? See, Tyler, you don't need mm. silly crap like that when you just mm. play the armies that are actually like built to work in the allotted get time that the game allows. Mm -hmm. Chess clocks are trying to solve the ultimate problem that they have designed armies that do not work <laughs> within the amount of time we have allocated um, to play this game yeah uh, we've talked a lot about this and and my issue with time and why i've been using them to get faster because i do tend to play very complicated armies or i certainly make them complicated sure uh, i'll find a way to make you know anything complicated but yeah i mean dude the last gt i went to there were a lot of people who are not getting into round five like it's still sure. a thing of in the community that that the game is taking too long uh, for most folks. Absolutely, so, man. but anyway. No, I, I yeah. hear you. Again, I get it. It, it is a challenge. I, and it's not, by the way, I like, I, despite what I'm saying here and, and the, the funny oh. hyperbole of it, I don't actually blame the players. I really do blame the fact that, like, the current complexity level of the game and how many of these armies are designed and the requirements of them and the way this yeah. game is played right now, it is just not possible to play within three hours. And all a chess clock does, in my mind, is add more stress to that for some people. Now, mm -hmm. there are some people who under that kind of training sure. and pressure yeah. will improve their, their you know, sort of speed of play and efficacy and, and efficiency of, of movement, as it were. But, yeah. like, a lot of stuff, it just, it, it just, it won't, it's not actually solving the problem. It's making you sure. aware of the problem. <laughs> right, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm 100% convinced that it's structural. Yeah. Like it, it's yes. not, yeah, I've kind of gotten over this idea that it's, it's on the, on the player. I mean, yeah, you can make different choices. Like I said, I mean, there's some things you can do something, certainly a lot of things that a lot of players can do sure. to get better and get faster. But yeah, like that game five, I played um, against Jake at Midwest Bash. I played like an absolute maniac and he was one of the fastest players I've ever played against in eight years. And we still only finished four rounds. Right. Like I, I looked like a crazy person. We had people watching us, my friends, like you look like a crazy person playing Warhammer. Like you're stressing me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. Like if you play this game at a comfortable pace with two armies of sort of like average middling actual complexity and model count, it is a four yeah. hour game. That's what it is. That's the reality of the thing. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It is a two pound shot we're putting into a one pound cannon simple yeah all right let me address some comments real quick here because we got a lot of them uh sure. all right so one 
Uh, a little while back, Hades had said something like, I'm certain the Dark Oath was supposed to be an Adepticon reveal. Do you think AOS is going to have any other reveal? Uh, Hades, homie, no, this was never an Adepticon reveal. And in fact, the size of this being revealed now should excite you. Because if they didn't have a huge thing in the clip, what huge thing that's probably coming in June or July would they possibly reveal for AOS at Adepticon? What could it be? Well, they're going to reveal 4th edition, brother. That's what it's going to be. Sure. They'll, they'll reveal book 6 of, of Dawnbringers and they'll reveal 4th edition. Like, that's why they're revealing this big box set now so they can focus on the real, so they can, so nothing gets in the way of the headline of 4th edition. Okay. Uh, let's see. Other stuff. Oh yeah, don't forget to hit like. Hit like for uh, everything so far because it's been fun and wackiness. A lot of people ask why we didn't talk about the gnomes. Uh, short answer, I don't like them. There you go. Um, also, it's for Blood Bowl. Um, yeah. But there we are. Uh, if, if people like the if people like gnomes, go nuts. I'm, I'm not here to yuck your yum. I'm saying I don't. But they're, because they're not for a game we, we normally talk about. That's the real reason. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then... Uh, some people saying they have a really fun two to three turns. Yeah, I agree. Like, a good game that only has three turns, I'm fine with it. If the expectation was this was a three-turn game, we'd all sure. be fine. Mm. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, there you go. Um, and then, you know, that's... And, and uh, yeah, so, uh, it's like... I think those are I think those are all good. All right, my picks of the week. Um, my picks are not a link. You will not find them in the description. Instead, I wanted to talk about two things. I want to talk about two things that recently came to my desk that I was using quite a bit over the past couple days and really, really liked. So first things first. Uh, here we go. Now, this is going to be too small to really show, but I had a friend of the show reach out. See this? This is super glue. Okay. And it's from Aquarium Co-op. And it's like super glue meant for plants and aquarium decor and stuff like that. It's safe for use with fish and shrimps and snails and all water. It's safe and it's water resistant because it's meant to be used like in fish tanks and stuff like that mm -hmm. and we had a friend of the show who makes this stuff and they reached out to me and asked if i wanted to try some of it to use in like hobby projects and i used some of it and tyler gosh darn it if this wasn't some of the most fun enjoyable gel like super glue i've ever oh, used in my life uh <laughs> oh, i really wow. loved it awesome. so i will put links for these two by the way i shouldn't say there's no links I think this is aquarium yeah. co-op i'll put a link down in there it's really great um it comes in these little two packs it was great if you use super glue I specifically reach back here. This base is drying. Mm. I specifically used it on this big base, which we'll talk about in a moment. And like all this stuff is just, I mean, really, 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 really on there. So very solid. Absolutely loved it. That's number one. Number two, other friends of the show, fellow Ohioans here, um, huge miniatures reached out to me and sent me like some of their stuff. This is huge, H-U-G-E, huge miniatures. They're like texture paste and stuff like that. So I've been messing around with a bunch of their stuff. All these things are going to have videos in the future. I don't know how to, but like I'll, I'll use the super glue in a future video, but it's hard to like do a video all about glue. Sure. Right? Like, <laughs> um, that's probably not a 15 minute video. This is super glue. It's yeah. pretty good. Um, but this huge miniature stuff, they sent me this. They sent me some of their fluorescence and some other things. I've been playing around with them and really liking their stuff. So great alternative. They make a bunch of different texture pastes for your bases and stuff. I found them really, really nice. Um, Still have to mess with the fluorescence, but I'm really liking everything I've used from them so far. Um, so huge miniatures and the aquarium co-op. I'll link them both in the description. Check them out. There you go. Those are my picks. Excellent. I just had a great nice. time messing around with both of them. And when I see products that I really, really like, I want to shout them out. So there you go. Very cool. Okay. Um, so both of those will go in the description. And hit like for awesome people making awesome products. These are both like local people making very cool stuff. Hmm. Um, all right. Uh, with that, Tyler, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about some hobby time, shall we? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, hit like for good old hobby time. Tyler, what have you been working on? Well, we've got, so my friend Cody, uh, wrote in Rochelle, they're going to get the penny night going again. So that's a commitment that's on the books. I need to get properly ready to do that. I've been thinking about, so I, I enjoyed the whole, if I, if somebody paints a train table, I'll paint a, paint a model, paint, paint a unit. That's what it was, paint a hero or a unit. Uh -huh. So we have a bunch of train tables that are going to need to get painted for Vault Wars this year. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I think we need to do that again. Uh, I'd like to find a way to better structure it and to have better uh, compensation, rewards, benefits. You know, like that's a big ask, asking people to paint <laughs> a whole tree. Obviously, it's a huge ask, right? Sure. Particularly of the, of the quality that uh, my, my crazy brain seems to, to, to want as far as Vault Wars tables. So, yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot to say about it, like, but I, I need to get that figured out. And I think that would help me actually get back on the hobby horse and kind of committed to, you know, painting the way that I would like to, but, but making it more meaningful collectively. There's, dude, there, there's this, like a lot of things I would like to do around terrain, you know, you got the terrain directory done, right? Which yep. I'm excited about that. I think that's cool. Uh, we don't have a, for example, we don't have a, not necessarily like Golden Dima, but some kind of shared competition for terrain, like in the community. Sure. So, some kind of project that rewards it, incentivizes it, celebrates it. Well, I mean, it. as, as I I've said, know. I think display boards should be pulled out of any kind of judging in, in painting yeah. uh, in general. Yeah. Like, I just think they shouldn't be part of paint judging at, at, at tournaments at all. Um, yeah. And I think that instead there should be a separate award that is just called, like, coolest display or coolest display board or something like that, that the display board is basically totally. the massive part of or all of. And that's terrain. And I think, by the way... We should encourage people, like, there's plenty of countries where you bring a train piece to the tables or stuff like that, right, for you yeah. and, and things like that. I think, you yeah. you know, it should encourage people to have display boards that, if you can, that are built of terrain you can take apart and use on your table. I think that's ultimately right. a cool way to go and, and stop making these, like, giant two-foot by two-foot or, or bigger things that just <laughs> are kind of sit there and then are, are pointless. I say with my yeah. giant, you know, ship <laughs> hanging in the background here that has, like, no sure. purpose at all. Um, that sat there. I actually am trying to upcycle. Is that what it's called when you when you take an existing mm. thing and put it to use again? That's like upcycle or whatever, right? That's right. I'm, I think yeah. I have a line on upcycling that that thing. So nice. Um, where where it will Tyler actually become terrain and a table. <laughs> Excellent. So anyway, yeah, th things are in motion. Uh, I just i like you you know like we're all very busy we all have a lot we're all doing too many things too many projects i i need to get this painting situation yeah structured in a way that it makes sense to me and sure. it's not just me painting some stormcast models or whatever even though i need to be painting some stormcast models to bring a stormcast army to holy havoc that we're going to do together that's in right. november that's right <laughs> so yeah anyway uh so there's that uh we had a war code rtt over the on saturday which nice. was amazing we had 22 players that came out for that uh we played light and shadow dude i hadn't played light and shadow all that much uh full transparency other people had played it and told me you know it was working really well sure <laughs> i excuse me upscale relocation orb i apologize for sneezing everyone upscale yeah. <laughs> that mission is so much fun Oh my god! Yeah. I had an absolute blast yeah, yeah. playing that mission. Just you, you just really don't... did a great job with it. Yeah, I mean, I know it's funny to play your own thing and be like, "Boy, I really actually yeah, had a good time like, with this thing I made." Actually enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 But uh, shout out to Bryce who was the starting point. I did a lot of work uh, with Bryce on it, uh, my buddy. Anyway, we played. Yeah, it was it was a blast playing playing War Code Missions. Uh, played Suns on fluctuations of power. That was the the white dwarf one with the six objectives objectives are empowered or depowered you get an extra point yeah, if yeah. you control them dude like uh, it was finally playing bro i'd never played broad stomp like yeah, i understand yeah. now why a lot of people are doing so well with it like especially now with the nullstone icon battle tactic that's available it was they were so good at, at scoring on primary he kept oh, yeah. getting like he had hold more and then he'd get the empowered and i yeah i just fell behind and kind of couldn't catch back up anyway yeah really interesting to see it yeah it's one of the armies of renown that had come out that i'm actually like completely here for it actually is finally the way i've wanted to play that army to be completely honest so yeah yeah yep um so for my hobby time obviously i made this big giant base you may have noticed here's this big giant base it's you know this thing it's obviously not yeah. primed or anything yet that's just all the raw stuff on it. it's still drying um and you might say what is that big giant base for well that's a great question here is what that big giant base is for. It's for this thing. Look at the size of this thing, Tyler. Now that's obviously, he doesn't have any of his armor on him. This is just his, his skeleton. God. But this is one of the big uh, heresy era knights. He has a sword. See? Oh, wow. He's going yeah. to chop you with his little sword. I kept everything articulate so I can move him around like a little action figure. So all of his, all of his little nice. joints still move, including this one where he's got his little gun arm. <laughs> Sweet. Um, uh, 
So yes, he's got a little bit. He's got a giant box of ammo on his back. It's very funny to me. Everything about these are just yeah. funny to me. Um, but this guy is absolutely huge. He's this mountain imperial knight. Um, the armor is actually back. It's kind of you can see a little bit of it right there mm -hmm. back on the other desk. Um, that was so. But I'm working on the skeleton first. The skeleton's probably the only thing I won't make a video out of, just because I don't think there's. I've covered most everything there before. I thought about maybe yeah. doing a new oil wash video. I'm not sure, like updating that, but. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Um, but this is going to be a Nurgle night. So I've done a lot of nights, Ooh. but I haven't done a Nurgle night before. So it's just going to be a really fun chance to like really mess this this guy up. Now this is mm -hmm. a Heresy era night, so he can't. He so it's a good it's a good chance for him to be like rusty and weathered and stuff like that, yeah. but not not modern forty k where he'd be like mixed with flesh and stuff like that. Like it's not mm -hmm. that crazy. Everything in Heresy are still within reason. So I just, I wanted to do a really heavily weathered night, right? So yeah. good chance to do it. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw uh, you released the photos for a Bretonian night on Pegasus. I did, yeah. I the... finished up that Duke on Pegasus. Um, he yeah, was, he looked amazing. That guy was so much fun. Doing that like inverted wing pattern with the, the yeah. sort of dark wings with the light hidden in was really fun. That was a... Uh, that was not hard. I have another one of those guys to paint, so I'll probably do a video. I did not record anything with that guy mm. um, the first time because I just wanted to paint a fig for fun, basically. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes <laughs> it's just for me. Um, yeah. But the... Um, but, like, I'll probably do a second one where I actually... Um, where I actually show, like, how to do those inverted wings. I don't think anybody will watch it. Whenever I do these technique videos on stuff like that, I mean, I shouldn't say nobody watches it. People watch it. But you have sure. to understand YouTube. YouTube is a really punishing thing to make, like, videos for, okay? Mm. Because whenever I make a video that I really like because I feel like I'm showing people a fun technique, like the most recent one with ghoul flesh and bat wings, which if you haven't watched yet, everybody, go check it out, okay? Check mm -hmm. out that video. Maybe if you already watched it, watch it again. I don't know. Put it on a loop in the background. Do something. But, like... Mm. Every time a new video comes out, it's going to tell you this video is X out of 10. Yeah, of your last oh, 10 videos. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, okay. And yeah. so anytime I do a technique video like that, even if it's something I think is really useful or hopefully fun or exciting for people, that is a yeah. straight 9 or 10 out of 10 every time. By mm. comparatively, no one watches those. Okay. <laughs> sure. So, like, it's, it's hard to sit there and go, yeah, okay, I'll just make all of these. Now, I've, I've, Mm. I'm not chasing the, the algorithm. I don't care. But it's still annoying when YouTube is constantly beating you up for it, right? right. My solution is the Scorsese thing. One for you, one for me. Right? So I'll do one <laughs> yeah. that's like, I hope it does better and one that is, is just actually the stuff I want to be doing, which is just sharing cool painting stuff with everyone and, mm -hmm. and not giving a flip about total views. If it's worthwhile to any number of people, it's worthwhile to me. Mm. Anyways, big night. So look for look for night content sometime in the future. Okay. Again. Excellent. All right. Uh, I saw the questions uh, over around mm -hmm. that uh, royal purple. That royal purple can potentially always have a sheen to it because it's purple. Like, they're supposed to be matte, but purple as a color can have a sheen to it. So it could be the bottle, could be the mixture. Like, it is something you want to really aggressively shake. But purple always has the chance... Um, to, to, to have a little bit of a shine, a little ultra mat at the end. We'll take that down. We're just jumping ahead right to our questions. With that, Tyler, why don't we get yeah. into today's main topic? That's right. It's questions, game and hobby AMA. Uh, here we go, <laughs> folks. Okay. So we have already harvested a bunch of questions from Twitter, from Discord, yeah. from places. Uh, get ready. We're going to answer all of it. For you watching the show now, uh... And, uh, you know, get your questions ready. Okay. Um, all right. And, uh, apologies in advance. We don't, I mean, we got, I made the mistake as I was telling you before the show of reaching out on top of your reach, you reaching out on Twitter and yeah, we've got way too many questions. So apologies if we don't get to everybody's question. I'm but going I to really... prioritize questions in the <laughs> chat here. We will be going back and forth. We were going to, yeah. we're going to handle these as quickly as possible. Understanding that Tyler and I are both obsequiously verbose okay so at any rate here we Great go word use. love that word yes please ask questions in chat hit us folks bring them in drop those questions hit like 
subscribe, hit buttons, do things, click around, find some fun, accidentally put your, your screen into theater mode and ruin your entire YouTube viewing experience. You know, do whatever. Okay, here we go. Uh, by the way, if you asked on Twitter, I am, I am bringing in, I literally went and grabbed all the tweets. So your question is publicly known. That is to say, like, I know it was you that you're, you know, we're, we're put, we're putting you on blast as it were. Here we go. We're going to start out, of course, Tyler with yeah. Martin Orlando. Okay. Of course. Yep. All right. The hosts seem to have an antagonistic or at least indifferent relationship with the concept of canon. As far as the Sigmar narrative goes, do you think that is because you like Warf Warhammer Fantasy Battle Lore more, or generally prefer your imagination to anything provided by the base text? So first of all, I'm not sure I have an antagonistic relationship with the concept of canon. I just don't give a crap. There's a difference. Like I'm I'm apathetic, not antagonistic. Yeah. Um But like I just find most of the detail of writing in AOS to be bad. Um, as I hope we've shown in the Dawnbringer series. Uh, and, like, it's just, it's bad. It's bad thematically. The characters are bad. They're thin. Everything's poorly developed and so on, other outside of a few really good stuff like the Callus and Toll books. Uh, I certainly didn't like Warhammer Fantasy Battle lore more. No, I thought that was even stupider. That's just, like, mm. that's just a bunch of nonsense crap. That's just not England fighting, not France, and then getting in weird sort of racist wars in, like, not Northern Africa and not Italy. Um, and so like, no, I definitely don't like that more. I just truly do prefer, prefer my own imagination. Yeah. You have any, yeah, any fair. Uh, uh, CLDR. Yeah. I haven't tried it enough, you know, got turned off early on by the, what were those, the realm gate war series and just kind of the initial yep. lay of the land and then didn't go back to it. I know there we've, we've got friends right in the community who actually do read novels and they read a lot of the lore and the battle tomes and they love it. Uh, so I, I think it's probably at this point, it's more I need to actually give it a serious try and yeah, see how that feels. I love, I mean, I think part of my personal anchoring is the end time series, right? Like that was sure. the last dedicated set of, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, is actually lore. like good, really good. Yeah. It, it just doesn't seem to be a uh, competing on a fair plane. You know, if, if you're right, <laughs> trying a, a yeah, because you, they're, they're, to they're telling a story point. there that can have real consequences. And right. oftentimes you can't do that in, in, in normal storytelling in these games. Yeah, and years of build up with right, with all these different characters, and it's kind of yeah, it's the culmination point as opposed to the beginning. So I don't I don't think that's a fair playing field. Um, but you hit you hit one of the big things for me is the this constant feeling of lack of depth to characters yeah. and lack of stakes and I, yeah, it's just yeah. Sure. It's, now I love AOS lore writ large, like at a high level. It's great. Mm -hmm. that's what I'll say. All right, let's let's grab some quick questions out of the chat. Here we yeah. go. You ready? We're going we're yep. to rapid fire some chat questions. Mike Cathcart says, Dear Mr. Game and Hobby, love it. Uh, you've got me psyched for a Skaven army in 24. What are some good models to start on that aren't super likely to get recast soon? Well, given what we saw out of the leak, it is hard to say what is and isn't going to be recast. Mm -hmm. But my guess is the most recent plastics would all stick around. So this means um, Storm Fiends will probably stay. Mm. The Vermin Lords will probably stay. These are some of the biggest or most complicated models though, which is the challenge. I really do think almost anything other than like those items are kind of up for grabs. I think that we could almost anything else could be thrown out. You know, that being said, just grabbing some clan rats or the 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 war uh the underworld's war bands, like Slinks or the Spike Claws Swarm, any of those things, great starters. Five, six models. All of those dudes will probably go through. They're all brand new plastics, and they'll all give you an idea of the types of surfaces you're going to want to encounter and let you develop color schemes. Because a lot of them have like mm. one plague rat, or you know, whatever, one plague monk, one storm vermin, one clan rat type thing. So, right. you know, right. one Eshin guy. So I would I would recommend the Underworlds Warbands. That's my answer. Okay. Very nice. Yep. Uh, Christopher Cruz, can you get primer off plastic? Yeah, sure. Um, like LA's totally awesome or anything like that. If you let it soak for 48 hours and then scrub with warm water and a toothbrush, it'll come off. Uh, purple power will also do it. Uh, Pat Noon, is competitive painting a scam? No, no, not at all. Um, there's plenty of really, really excellent uh, painting competitions and 
that that recognize the incredible quality that a lot of competitive painters do. Um, there are some competitions I like less than others. It's really that simple. Uh, Tyler, I'm gonna let you take this one. Haiti hmm. said, "Should all factions get terrain pieces? Would you like to see faction scenery?" Hades, push come to shove, I would rather we do away with a lot of it. I, I'm not a huge fan of it, personally. The Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just do away with it. Yeet it into <laughs> I would, the sun. <laughs> I would like to, yeah, dude, I'd like to see this game take things away often more than add things. Yeah. At yep. this point. I, I agree. We do not need faction terrain. We certainly don't need faction scenery. What I would love is boxes that I could go buy off the shelf that are realm-based terrain. Here is how you here is a group of here is a box of terrain that is setting up your Gur table, yes. your uh Shimon table, your whatever, whatever table. I think that would yeah. be the way to go. Yeah, that relates to some some of the thoughts not a massive tangent here, but in terms of right what I was talking about earlier, uh, terrain incentivize more terrain painting in the community. We have this, there's not been much effort around creating realm, realm themed terrain tables. Yep. Like uh, Herner has done that. There's been sure. some examples of it, but for the most part, the community has not tapped into that as much as we could have. So yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in exploring that space and trying to get ways more collective effort around doing that. But you're right, dude, like they haven't supported it hardly at all. Yep. I mean, they've done a little bit, but yeah, huge opportunity. Tyler, here's your chance, buddy. Clayton uh, Hellman. Tyler, what are those pictures behind you? Specifically, <laughs> the econ rights photo. Tyler, okay. you want to explain it? So, I told Vince early on in hopping on this show that maybe I should take some of these things behind me down so that people don't, you know, get like any kind of political e economy messages on this show and get upset at Vince uh, for propaganda or something. And... It took how long have we been doing this show? This is the first time <laughs> ever that anybody it, yeah. has that anybody has ever asked about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's what you told me. You you're like, dude, nobody's gonna care. Nobody's gonna see it. Nobody's gonna comment on it. I've been so disappointed that it's taken. It finally happened. Thank you, Clayton. I appreciate it. Uh, it's just the some of the political economy work I'm involved in. Uh, some for work I've always done um, coordination of. Uh, science, technology, philanthropy projects, usually with a longer term horizon, uh, things like AI, regenerative medicine, tissue organ engineering, all kinds of crazy things. And I've recently, over the last five years, gotten involved in political economic work. So I don't want to go into a lot of detail with it because this is not what this show is about. But yeah, it's related to that. It's not, but this <laughs> this show supports workers' rights and supports you know unions and things like that. Like I'm gonna be straight with you, homie. I don't I don't care. Sure. <laughs> like that's what we're here for. Like after that, I, I told Tyler, put that thing back up. I'm here for it. Like I'm yeah. not. I, I we're, this is not a political show. We don't talk about that crap. But I'm also not like like this is meant to be fun and goofy but like also i don't like have your picture you know be you that's it okay yeah. uh cool uh let's keep going if you could port one aos army to 40k skaven if you could port one 40k army to aos none there you go that's my answer uh, <laughs> this was jc effery j Seffrey. you got any thoughts tyler uh what was the question if you could port one army from AOS to 40k, what would it be? If you could port one army the other direction, what would it be? One army to, uh, let's see. Back and forth between the games. I'm wanting to say crap worlds just because I love crap worlds, both no thinking involved. We already have elves. <laughs> Bring in those dumb jester world, guys. Those guys are fun. The little Harlequin <laughs> weirdos. Those, would those dudes would be fun. Uh, uh, just weirdo no, clown people dancing around. Right. Uh, I'd say that's all I got on that one. Fair enough. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, next up here. Uh, how do you translate the ideas of a paint scheme into a concrete idea? I know color theory is big here, but I've been having trouble with that with Sylvaneth. I mean, the answer is test models. So I actually have a video on this, The Grizz. Go check it out. I have mm. a video on literally um, how to pick a paint scheme and how to develop it. I give you lots of ideas in there. The short answer is the simple stuff you'd imagine, like do some test models, see if it looks right. Ask other people, does this look okay? Or what looks wrong like people have a very indelible sense of color theory even without like subconsciously even without really um, knowing the details of it uh and you know so do some test models mock things up you can usually grab little cutouts of the guys and then like just paint them sort of in like mm -hmm. a paint 3d or something it doesn't have to be a high-end program or or gimp or whatever and and just kind of place colors 
loosely and, and get a general concept. I think that's mm. usually the way to go. You can also just take a photo of your mini and then knock it into black and white and put it in the photo thing and paint it. <laughs> like, it's that easy. <laughs> and I think that's... Because then you can just move colors around and see if it balances. In the end, if you think it looks okay and other people around you think it looks okay, it's, it's probably okay. Um, Faust, how many armies is too many armies for this game? Tyler, what's the actual upper limit? How many armies is too many armies? You got like about, we got, we'll call it 25 oh, right now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, it's 30. I would, I, that's what I was going to say 30, but like, I was thinking, could I, could I see going up there? It feels like 30. It's yeah. 30. Cause I mean, we're already like, if you look at us compared to 40 K we're ne around 40 K's number already. I think they're higher. Uh, still, I think they've got, yeah. well, yeah, I guess if you, if you count like all the, the, uh, two dozen different space marine etc they get yeah. their own stuff so they're their own thing <laughs> sure yeah but anyway 30 seems right yeah yep okay uh very good so there you go uh cygnus question vince and tyler which miniature that you've painted are you the most proud of and why uh good lord i have no idea i really i really couldn't tell you man <laughs> uh it'd have to be like for army versus display and i don't know um, there's lots of them that I, I like over time, little, mm -hmm. little things I'm proud of, but, um, I couldn't, I couldn't pick just one. I can't pick one of my babies. I really can't. I'm sorry. That's a disappointing answer, Cygnus. It's a cop out. Pick, pick three. Pick, pick two. Pick three? <laughs> uh, whatever the most recent display thing is that I did, because I'm generally like, that's, I'm generally pushing myself as much as possible there. Uh, okay. the, um, uh, Necromunda uh, gang that I won my first Golden Demon with because it was incredibly meaningful. And I predicted where those ganger girls were going because I can, did cybernetic conversions from scratch on them. And then they mm -hmm. ended up releasing models that more or less matched to the conversions that I made. So I was very proud of them for multiple reasons. And uh, the um, Gatebreaker Gargant for army painting because I thought he came out really fun and I uh, I mm -hmm. like his big flaming sword, and I like that weird machine Frankensteinian nature of them. There you go. I picked three. Yeah, awesome. Oh, I just tell you, since you wrote the terrain dictionary, who? What is your favorite terrain STL creator manufacturer? That's a great question. Uh, let's see. So there's one. I don't know how well this one is known. Sawant. I might be not pronouncing that right. S is in Sam. A W A N is in N C T. Three D. Uh, this dude. This guy has. I don't know if it's a guy. I think it's a guy. Uh, based on what i've seen i believe that their terrain would work would be, would be the best terrain for what what's the the prior to age of sigmar or age of chaos what's the name of this setting the like the what's there's a the age of myth there it okay, is okay got it I didn't know what you're aiming at. <laughs> the age, right. I know, yeah, yeah. The age of myth. So this terrain, I think, would create, would make for amazing age of myth themed AOS tables. Oh, nice. So want 3D. Yeah. Uh, so I want to get, I want to talk with Polcastro about getting some of this stuff printed up because I haven't seen any Nashcon tables with it. But yeah, that one's amazing. Obviously, there's printable scenery. Uh, what's another one? 3D Hexes has really great stuff. There's, there's so many, but yeah. Right on. Nice. Okay, let's see. Uh, ba boom, boom. I'm just trying to catch up here to where we've got the next question. Uh, here we go. Uh, Mirror, when making something like a snow or desert-themed color scheme, should you be keeping all your color temperatures the same, e.g. pinkish highlights for a red cloak instead of orange for a snow scheme? Um, you can. I mean, it's it's honestly up to you. Like, are, is the character standing near a fire? Like, you know, Vikings often burnt buildings, and it's, they might be raiding a snowy village, but if the village is on fire, the local ambient temperature is going to be pretty warm, right? So, I mean, you can you can be, uh, you know, like, technically, if something's in a cold environment, then it should have cold highlights universally, and then the shadow should be warm and vice versa. So, like, if you're asking the, the specific guideline, yes. But, again, the fig is always yours to kind of do whatever you want with. There's no one magic yeah. answer or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, Cygnus, mine is this dorky beast of Nurgle that I painted. It's my yeah. favorite Nurgle model that I've painted. So, yeah, so far. And Connor, it was amazing meeting you too, man. Thanks for all your help with train setup. And yeah, and at the end of the day, uh, I was putting Connor <laughs> to work helping us break down at the end of the day after his three games. Connor, I didn't hear how you did, by the way. So maybe if you get a chance, add in the comments 
you know how your army went. So he was playing Cities of Sigmar. Nice. So he had a he had a, he had a nice army. Tyler, here's a here's a here's a hot one. Should endless mm. spells go the way of the dodo? Yes, I th- yeah. I think uh, I think so. I mean, dude, like I do enjoy them personally. It is just an I don't know. I'm a little more torn on this. I think you are unequivocally in the camp of yes. I fair? am yes for the general. The army specific ones can stay around if we want because they're they're more constrained. Okay. They're not taken by everybody. They can be more tightly controlled and everything like That's, that. That's yeah. That feels like a pretty good compromise. Mm-hmm. I I do en- I do enjoy them on the whole. They're the inverse know, like... of our of battle tactics in that they belong in, only in the armies and not being generic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I do enjoy that layer to AOS. I, th- I think it's it's a nice differentiator. It's unique. It's interesting. A little surprised they haven't done it yet for 40k. Which, yeah, but anyhow, it's... Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's hit another one here from my sheet that's up. Uh, This is a fun one from Kay on Twitter who said, what is your ideal for how the Skaven army should function? Not that far off of what it is right now. Like, it's they they had a lot of stuff correct. But ideally, Mm. it's a mixed arms, like the standard arrangement should have the ability to go lots of different ways to build into the different clans and run all of those different routes. Like, do the all ninja rats, do the all artillery, do the all big pile of bodies thing, sure. But like this sort of standard array, the best best configuration should be a mixed arms force of, you know, bodies to the front, guns to the back, monsters in the middle you know characters weedy and amongst their being sneaky and for the most part and then lots of like lots of high variability randomness that you really want to push the button on but with the one time you roll the one your entire unit blows up or explodes or something basically yeah. uh, most of your units should have about a every time you do a thing it should be about a 15 percent chance that it completely kills itself if you decide to use the advanced randomness mode 15 to 20 percent that's the correct thing that's how they should do it when they do that wrong like they did with the doom wheel you never use it because it's stupid and they don't understand math. Um, the book they wrote was just like they didn't put enough time into it. It's like the ogre book. There were some really good ideas and then they just did not spend the time to develop it. So, yeah. What would it look like if there were a Skaven design brief that said maximize gaslighting? What would that look like as a concept? <laughs> maximize gaslighting? Maximize gaslighting because I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I do enjoy you Skaven players and your penchant for gaslighting about your poor fair army and just how much you struggle to play this game. Uh, Tyler, that, we, know, so. we have and always have had and will always have the most fair army in AOS. It's That's uh-huh. been more consistently true than it hasn't. That's all I'm saying. That's the line. Yep. I enjoy that line. Absolutely. Hit just... like for awesome Skaven fairness. <laughs> uh, we're the only army that kept all our downside stuff. I'll say that. Like, I don't see animosity running around in orcs and goblins anymore. So, you know, just saying. Okay. Uh, okay. The Sloth Bear. Vincent Tyler, what do you see being in the next Dawnbringers book in terms of factions included and possibly what new models? So book six here, I assume, is what we're talking about. Um, like the, the, the yet unknown book that uh, that is still obviously going to be waiting in the wings. We're not ending on random crone lady. It's chaos. <laughs> it's it's super chaos. And, and I assume Corgus Call yeah. and everything like that like the finishing yeah. of all the big stories hopefully a new valkia that'd be really neat i'd, I'd be yeah. super here for that okay yeah we talked a lot about that during the prediction show yeah so yeah. yep Looking forward uh, to it. colt sphinx what about faction based terrain that doesn't affect the game you mean like something that's not doesn't actually do anything it's just like a piece of terrain sure if you want to make boxes full of neat like this is ogre terrain and it's just like it's ogre looking terrain and it's just like that yeah sure okay <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm all for that that's how a lot of steve's tables uh, are made up like tyler you haven't seen his slanesh table yet i don't know if I've, i don't know if you've seen pictures of it maybe on uh i did yeah i saw some photos Incredible. but that was the photo that came from what i donated to him from my old slanesh board i donated all that stuff oh, wow. to him and he made the table out of it and so it's a big gladiatorial oh. arena it's made out of the play school arena roman arena yeah. and he did a great job with it so it was fun um, yeah it's a really yeah, really really fun good. board too okay cool 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 uh How, you're gonna you're gonna have to allow me to get some of my you know 100 questions that i that i don't I, worry we're gonna get there as well okay absolutely can't, can't, can't just can't just hog all night here no no not at all we're not going to i'm just <laughs> i'm just trying to make sure we keep up with the chat that's all i know, I know. okay all right uh okay oh i love you i love plastic crack 
Love you, man. <laughs> Ryan Vince, what is your favorite city and state, and why is it Dayton, Ohio? Get out of here. Get out of here, Dayton, Ohio. That's, that's insanity. Obviously, obviously, Columbus is best. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, Clayton said he was a history major in college with specialization in social and political economic U.S. history, so those photo photos caught his attention. Very nice. Okay. Uh, let's do another one here from, from over here on the sheet while we're doing okay. it. Uh, this one's a very me question, but I, but I, but I want to hear what your thoughts are on it first. I don't want to, I'm not going to answer this. You ready? Here we okay. go. Karna says, you mentioned that you dislike Slanesh's current play style. What would be a mechanic you would see implemented for Slanesh that fits the theme? How would you redesign, you know, something like Twin Souls or, or whatever? Tyler, what do you feel about current Slanesh? Yeah, I was, I mean, if, I've said it a few times on the show. I always think of that Smashing Pumpkins line, right? Speed kills, but beauty lives forever. Mm -hmm. That uh, as like the design principle for Slanesh. You've, you have talked a lot about this, that it is, it, it should be the ultimate um, glass cannon army. Now we have that, right, that framework for a number of armies in the game right now, but it, it should be the defining one. I, I do like the concept of this mechanic, this pleasure pain mechanic. I think the implementation is a little rough. Uh, but I love that idea, so I'm not sure what that would look like with a better implementation. Have you talked about that before? Do you yeah, have sure. a, okay, like a particular imp implementation idea for for that element? But I mean, yeah, ultimately I mean, that's very high level. But that that's often what comes to my mind as a starting point for this army. Yeah, I mean, I, emptiness I feel, I is loneliness, like and loneliness is cleanliness, and cleanliness <laughs> is godliness, and God is empty, just like me. So I mean, the yeah. the the problem with Sinesh is exactly what you said. Like it it. It should be a speed kills army. It should just be like the fastest on the ground army around. Like that's what it comes down yeah. to. And it should really be about being able to set up multiple things. And it should it should have a sort of reverie type vibe to it that the more of this that happens, the more violence that's occurring in there, the more ecstatic things become. So like mm -hmm. your units are encouraged to get in and fight and mix it up and like multi-charge units and, and things like that and be in combats. They should be fairly fragile. And when your units get mm -hmm. punched down and beat down, right? Like there 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 should be it's you don't want like a we tried the what if we did the inverse of blood tithe where you get points for not dying basically, right? Like we tried that, that doesn't work. But yeah. it should just be as simple as like the sort of ecstatic combat as it continues the more of it that's happening and obviously the, mm. the play against it is that you're fairly fragile so the way you set it up is by making their units split up by multi-charging you see what i'm saying that's like the soft and yeah. it's not night haunt where like you're doing this it's more like you're trying to keep all your units fighting and in combat and and just getting into as many combats as you can with things and so like i've, I've never bought this force as like the mixed arms force but i guess that's how it is now because mm. the shooting and stuff so I think that's stupid. I just, I completely think that's stupid because if you make the, the, the problem with any of those armies being mixed arms is then, well, I guess all the demons are trash then. Cause I want to be able to play a demon army. And if the default assumption yeah. is mixed arms and none of the demons have range, then that's not an army anymore. Mm. That's it. Uh, maybe I'm missing you just talking a little bit, or you've talked about this in the, the Sunlight show that you did. What about, some, so you, you just mentioned like this idea of revelry and ecstasy and a flow. Uh, have you thought about like some version of the IDK, uh, right? What what the, the the table, the you know flood tide, high tide, yeah, yeah, etc. Sure, sure. Like as a, as a way, yeah. It, it feels like maybe something along those lines could be part of the the design orientation of Slanesh, but or I don't know. Maybe that's. I not really the right think it's point. just. I, I think it's as simple. I don't think we need to introduce tracking. I don't think we need a new abacus. I don't think we need anything like that. It's. I think it's as simple as like, at the end of each turn, you count up the number of your units that are fighting, that are in combat, or something like that, okay? Yeah. Or that made a charge, or that whatever. We pick some mechanic like this, or that satisfied one of these two or three criteria. And if you hit a certain number, you reach a new level of ecstasy, mm -hmm. right? And then, and then that provides you with some buff for the rest of the game as you hit this ecstatic level, all right? And and yeah. it's not it's not an ever increasing thing. 
You understand what I'm saying? Like it's just mm. you're you can you're just picture it like a sound wave going up and down, right? Uh-huh. And like if you get higher and if you get fall lower in turn three, nothing goes away. It's just that was your you're at your whatever your XT level is. You're just trying to constantly push it higher. Mm. Does that make sense? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I it, I definitely resonate with. Uh, I, we spent a lot of time on this, but I, it's a fascinating topic because I, I do resonate a little bit. The, with the idea that they are missing a, a, a sufficient pattern expression. Yep. Uh, one of the closest people that I have seen try to do this is Laurent, you know, my friend Laurent, who, who we had on the show. Laurent just played a list this past Saturday, and a similar list went 4 1 at Lone Star. And for example, it had Celeste, Celeski, however you say that, mm-hmm. models, that worst girl's name, Celeste you Wolf. know, where it's got the, yeah, the the balance. You have to try to maintain that balance, right? Yeah, yeah. Of the demons and mortals, and it has a huge buff. And I think like that's an interesting mechanic. It's, it's some of that stuff. It feels like there's the depravity, but it's not generalized. It's like it it amplifies, right? With a particular unit, you go on Slick Blade Seekers, they do a bunch of damage. It amplifies the depravity significantly. But so I think there's some of those elements that are, for me, they're not necessarily that far off. It just often feels like a lot of the execution isn't as good as it could be. Agreed. And it hasn't, yeah. But I think some of the pieces are there. Yep. Yeah, the speed could just be as easy as like a locust that just gives a bunch of people three d six charge or something like that. It's it's not complicated yeah. stuff. You know, it can right. it can be really simple. Like it could just be the three d six charge army, and that's fine. I'm sure. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Uh, Vince, how many AOS armies have you painted? How many more do you need to paint until it's an LRL army you're painting? I have 20 AOS armies. Um, I will never paint an LRL army. All of them. Infinity. <laughs> that is not an army that I will ever paint. Uh, my buddy has an LRL army, and they're sitting mm-hmm. in the cabinet right here, This in this cabinet right here. And he, he has painted most of them, but because mm-hmm. he keeps his stuff here. But I don't. I, I will never paint them. I allow them to stay here without me smashing them with a hammer out of, out of <laughs> generosity only. He watches this show often, so don't worry. Your, your figs are safe, man. I'm not going to smash them, but yes. Mm-hmm uh okay hey battleshock wargaming uh we, we we're glad you love warcoda awesome very nice uh oh yeah yeah love those guys they've been doing a series on their on their youtube channel oh uh i don't know which if that's anyway i don't know which one that is comedy but so uh, two people at the rtt that we had on saturday commented that they learned about warcoda through battleshock wargaming so that that was amazing yeah so That's yeah, awesome. thank you guys. You guys, you guys got to play Light and Shadow, Total Conquest, and Fluctuations of Power. I haven't seen those yet. Actually, I think you did play Total Conquest, Fluctuations of Power, Light and Shadow. I think you guys will love those. They're a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, Haiti says Vince is just too afraid to paint them. He can't rise to the challenge. Yeah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. I mean, that's yes. I, I I am very afraid of them. Simple answer. I have no problem admitting of it. My. Uh, my ego is far too secure to be worried about being called a chicken. I am no Marty McFly. I'm good. I want nothing to do with those overly detailed nonsense figs. Uh, all right. Birdman Collins over on Twitter said, Often when a faction is leading, it's only statistically within bounds because its other factions are watering down its win percentage. Do you think they should be internally balanced first before nerfing a faction to address a sub-faction problem? I thought this was an interesting one because I think what he's basically saying is like the sub factions within there, right? Like oftentimes one is really doing really well and the others aren't. I mean, Seraphon's sure. sort of the worst expression of this, but there have been many. Right. 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 And here's what I'll say. When they do these balances, they're looking at detailed information, Birdman. Yeah. They're looking at this at the sub faction level, at the unit level of like they like they're pulling all the data. So I think the the, the fixes are generally tr- attempting to be targeted at the actual problems, right? Yeah. What's getting included too much? What sub factions are pushing this up? What do we not want to hurt? What do we want to help? And so on and so forth. I think it is a very thoughtful process that is already based around the sub factions. So, one thing that would be useful, in my opinion, is for the what's it called, <laughs> Meta Watch, to yeah the release that they have of the aggregate data, right? For them to add a graphic. Mm-hmm. That breaks things down by the sub factions. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think ultimately that is more useful information. You know, seeing Legion of Night as opposed to whatever within Soul Blight, or yeah, things of Sotek as opposed to whatever in Seraphon. I mean, th- I've tended to find that to be a better 
barometer on where we are in the ecosystem at any given time, right? But just as a community, we haven't really internalized that as well or oriented around it as much collectively as we need to. So I think that would be a nice, a nice change to add that layer. Because okay. I know they got the data. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I mean, he's mentioned it before in, like, if you listen to his talk track in the videos, right, he'll talk about sometimes, like, he'll, he'll, uh, Matt will talk about the sub-factions and, like, this sub-faction was doing right. well and this wasn't, like, he talked about it a lot with Seraphon and stuff uh, last time, right, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, Brandon, uh, I have heard that gluing two painted parts of miniature together should not be done. How do you recommend gluing sub-assemblies together after painting? Uh, I have a whole video on it, Brandon. Go back and check out gluing sub-assemblies. Like, there's literally a video on that thing. So that is my simple answer to that one. I knew we could get that one quick. Uh, and then Emma, uh, yes, no something, uh, says, why is Relocation Orb the greatest battle plan ever created? Mm -hmm. Why should it be the only battle plan played at events? I agree. Five five rounds Relocation Orb five times in a row. Um, because that's it just is, and that's why Tyler uh, remade it as Light and Shadow and, <laughs> and really improved upon. You, you didn't think perfection could be improved, but yet here it was. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Hades asked a big question here, Tyler. All I right. saw that. Yeah. How would we redesign magic? That's a big question. Yeah. Didn't you, didn't you do a show covering a little bit of this recently? At With some Tom? point, I know we did. I mean, uh, here's my very simple answer. I don't yeah. think the old world's magic system is terrible. I think it's actually pretty good. Um, it's similar, but still pretty good. Uh, second joke answer, I guess. Uh, maybe a joke answer, maybe a real answer. Uh, go back to cards. Go back to the fun magic mm -hmm. card system of like fifth edition Warhammer. Um, if it's gonna be silly, let's just let's just make it silly. <laughs> I don't know. That definitely stood out. I, I haven't listened to all of the, your old world review with Chuck and Brendan, mm -hmm. uh, which that was the right call getting those guys on the show rather than me. They the it was an awesome show what I have listened to so far. But you guys were talking about the magic system in there. A lot of those elements made a lot of sense to me. Like they seem like really solid, strong, simple elements for the foundation of magic. You know, like if you're a level three wizard, you get plus what you roll, you get plus three, I think, to your cast. Correct. It's like just you, you add that you add your level to your casts. You can cat you get a, yeah. you get casts equal to you cast all your spells once per round if they're viable. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. I like the you know the way that the timing can work seem pretty dynamic but also simple mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but we definitely have a I mean we've always had a disagreement as far as like I love the this primal magic season I, I think it's interesting I know you hate it <laughs> when we talked our very first conversation on the road about all of this <laughs> you told me you hated it uh, so it's yeah um, but, uh, that's a long topic though but yeah I, I do enjoy a lot of the aspects that we have right now. I want to be sad if we if we get some of them transported over. Like I enjoy the miscasting. I enjoy the ultimate force, total power, whatever it's called, Techn irresistible force. I think it's technical name. Um, but yeah, I know you're not a huge fan of any of this. I, I don't care. I, like that stuff's yeah. fine. Again, yeah. I, I do really like the old world's magic system. I think it's really well designed. Sure. Like, it's it's simple. It's effective. Magic feels like magic. It shows up in lots of phases in the game. It's not sequestered. You have yeah. a reasonable bonus. You tend to get your spells off, but people can also tend to unbind them. I like the difference in power levels and stuff like that, where people can unbind at different ranges. It actually is meaningful. Like, I, I don't know. I just like the system. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. So, no, fair. Yeah. There you go. Charles, any advice for a colorblind painter? Um, Sure. I, I, I'm, if you're red-green colorblind, you know, stick into other colors that you can see better definition of. I'll say that. Two is most of painting is really about value it's about light and shadow it's not about like the color is secondary if you understand light and shadow and values you have everything you need to paint so um it may in many ways you may have an advantage because you're not distracted by worrying about color but when it comes to color you can always go to things like um army painters systems or people that have very clear labels on them of saying like this is the six paints in this color family and they get progressively mm -hmm. lighter or darker so you know even if you can't sort of see the color you know you're operating in the right space mm -hmm. okay edgar Bayas. tyler i want you to answer this one i want to get into aos but three hour 2000 point games aren't realistic for me i also don't want to play a game that isn't balanced for lower points should i just wait for a combat patrol equivalent what do you think what do you think oh uh, honestly yeah I mean, that's what I would do at this point. We're not that yeah. very far away. Like, I that, that's a simple answer. Yeah, just uh, maybe you could certainly go ahead and start collect. Well, I guess that's kind of the idea is that if they're going to do the true combat patrol, right, they literally design it around what's in those boxes. In the box, yeah. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that would be the easy answer. Uh, we've talked a lot about this. It's a structural problem with AWS 3.0. Uh, it's so hard to teach. I find it so hard to teach new players this game uh, without, I mean, you really have to strip so much away and it just, yeah, it's, you kind of have to, we, we've been doing custom, you know, situations, basically, we strip most things away. We, we've talked a lot about it over the last two years, right, yep. with all of this. But yeah, that, that would be the simplest answer, because it feels almost certain that that's what we're going to get, right? Yeah, Whatever it's I, gonna be I have to agree. I mean, like, I my advice in the meantime would be yeah. pick up a couple small packs of models of the army that interests you and work on your paint schemes, stuff like that. Totally. Like, that's a good thing to yeah. do in the meantime. Paint some terrain and get your table ready. Like, you're going to need that kind of stuff, you know? So there's, like, there's plenty right. of things you can be doing proactively. And then once Combat Patrol and that kind of thing comes out, or whatever it is, the Spearhead, I guess, is what the new boxes are called. Is that right? Is that what they say on them? Sounds right. Yeah, yeah I think, I think Spearhead. There was... so I, I assume that'll be the new buy this box and play this box against other people who have their versions of this box game. Yeah. And then, yes, I think that's that's going to be your, your, your good entry point there, 100%. Okay. Christopher mentioned Warcry. I I know you played Warcry a little bit. You know, I haven't, but that, obviously that's a different system. Maybe there's some things that Warcry and I will share, but yeah, I can't really speak to Warcry. It's a fun game. It is a very different game. They're really not related, right? Mm. Um, Alex said, hi, how do you guys track and manage your collection? Well, I have this app on my phone that I scan my magic cards into. Oh, wait, you mean Warhammer figs? Oh, I don't track or manage any of that. Mm -hmm. they, they go in these, they go in these, these, in these shelves here and then they all they sit there that's it, until i play them on saturday nights that's what happens <laughs> that's it I, I have no tracking or managing i reach i reach out to friends and say hey are you using your stormcast army or hey hey that's lanesh army that's been sitting on the shelf you know it's it's part of the collective uh it's part of the commune are you are you going to use it for the next that's it's easy man you just yeah, you just have have a community with a bunch of crack addicts who can't help themselves. <laughs> sure, <laughs> and just yeah, you get you. Get, there's a lot of benefits involved. Sure, absolutely. Uh, okay. Um, Qualism said, "I've been playing 40k. I haven't tried AOS yet. What do you like most about AOS in comparison to 40k? PO at PS, I love Space Station Zero. Hey, awesome." Oh, thank you very much, man. Space Station Zero is for those who don't know is the game that what uh, the sci-fi game that Uncle Adam and I put out. Tyler is working on the editing of our next game right now. So how about that? It's uh, it's, we just just wrapped up development on it. On so we're moving along. <laughs> um, I mean, I can say what I like best about it. Honestly, is it's a lot more, it's a lot more free of a game. It's not focused on fiddly diddly nonsense. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about things like WYSIWYG for the most part. I'm free to be creative with my color schemes, with my story. I'm not locked mm -hmm. to the lore or how I model my figs or anything like that. I pay points and just like a pretty reasonable estimates much easier simpler faster experience um mm. that's why like i i just i can't get into the i can't get into caring about this guy has a plasma gun and this guy has a, a melted gun and this guy has a, this thing like i just i i don't care i like just being like no mm. these are my dudes and they all have swords there you go that's cool you got any thoughts on that one are we moving to the next one? Oh, moving on okay uh, all right, let's do a question here off this. Uh, mm. Brian, this one was interesting to me. I, I think this is, I don't think I agree with this one. Brian B said, uh, what can be done to increase the value of rend? As a stat, it feels extremely devalued compared to mortal wounds, which seem more ubiquitous. I highly disagree, Brian. I highly disagree. Is this someone playing a three up save army all the time? What does this mean? Like I am thirsty for rend most of the time. I love rend. It's the highest value stat in the game. You roll a Horfrost and you get that three, you're like, oh, baby, here comes the Ren three. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think mortal wounds are ubiquitous. We are undoubtedly at the lowest number of mortal wounds that have ever existed in AOS history right now. Well, uh, maybe I'm trying to I'm quickly trying to think uh -huh. of the 26 factions in the ecosystem. And where are we right now? Uh huh. Uh I mean, okay. most of the time in history, Tyler, this game has been dominated by armies that crapped out mortal wounds. Okay. Uh, uh, let me take you on a brief tour. Here we go. Ready? No, I mean, okay. I, I, Blood letter spam in the early days. Here's 60 attacks and every two plus is a mortal wound. How about that? You think that would fly nowadays? Okay, cool. Right. How about Doc? Every time one of your dumb witches dies in these massive piles, uh, they Blood do up. a mortal wound on a five back. Plus, then they also have... 
uh, t touch mortal wounds and other mortal wounds they were also crapping out as well. Uh, yeah. Like, we could keep going. This gets worse. How about the FEC period of the FEC Slanesh dominance when a Terror Geist yeah. would come screaming into your unit and do 24 mortal wounds and then attack again? Yeah. Okay, like, these just aren't yeah. things that exist anymore. Yeah, going, f actually, at least just looking at the the factions, I'm not seeing that many examples of a level of mortal wounds that is out of bounds, let's say. Uh, we've had the obvious example of Fangs of Sotek. Uh, I've thought about running or creating a garbage list award for people who write, sorry, everybody, but I, I, I think the biggest, mm -hmm. for me, the biggest garbage list in this game mm -hmm. is, I'm going to piss some people off saying this, is six Vexilors. And like all, however many nine and nine leaders you can fit into a list, yeah, that's like the dumbest <laughs> list imaginable. That's obviously mortal wound spam. Uh, but anyway, with apologies to anybody who enjoys that, I'm sure there's nuance into playing six vexlors and and annihilators. But yeah, no, you're probably right. There's not a tremendous amount of it. A lot of the examples they've they've curtailed. The latest being the fusiliers. I mean, that didn't even really get off the ground before they cur curtailed that appropriately. Yeah. So I. No, I think Rend is super high value. I, I don't think Mortal Wounds... I think that the, the only sort of outstanding problem is exactly the Coalesce thing you're talking about, honestly. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, this is... And then I want to answer this one because a lot of people had this hobby question. Um, hobby, experiencing some tearing of layers of airbrushed white ink from a Xenothal highlight. I've started to matte varnish after Xenothal to be safe. In the past, never experienced any tearing of airbrushed inks. Any advice to avoid that? It just is what happens with inks. Switch to paints or varnish afterward really is the answer. Like switch to just a, a thin down near white paint. I usually use ivory color paints instead to do my Xenothal ink because of that very reason. Inks are just very easy to reactivate. It's just what happens. So, unless you varnish over them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cool. All right, I'm sure we've missed some questions here. Uh, Flummoxed Buffoon, which most describes Vince's dogs? Corn Flesh Hounds, Soul Blight Direwolves, or Stormcast Grift Hounds? Ooh, good question. Good question. Uh, well, there might be a, a t shirt that could influence. Yes, that has <laughs> they are direwolves in the t shirt with my wife because uh, she requested yeah. to be a vampire lord. That was what she thought was most appropriate. And, mm. and they're, so they're all. They're all undead dire wolves. And I think that's true. Loyal, mm -hmm. dumb, excitable. Yeah, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's that is absolutely correct. Uh okay. Um I would be so down for a TikTok account with Kathy and the dogs. Like, oh, I would just eat it. It blows up. my mind that my wife still works. Because she like, could just do dog content <laughs> oh my God, and be so absolutely. successful on social media. I, I've, I've, Tyler, so many golden retrievers. Like, I want to tell everybody, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pause this whole show because I want to tell everybody a story, okay? So I'm obviously shooting from a basement right now, right? My house has an upstairs. Like, I have, I have a ground floor and a, and a second floor. Okay. Mm. And every night when we go, when, when my wife goes to bed, when we go to bed, my middle, my middle dog, Lyra, my dog, as it were, she will run up to the top of the stairs and she stands there and waits and stares down at you from the top of the stairs. Now, Tyler, mm -hmm. what she wants is she wants you to throw her a ball. You throw the ball from the bottom of the stairs up to her. So you're at the base of the stairs. You throw it up. She'll jump up and catch the ball. She's very good at catching the ball. OK, so she mm -hmm. catches the ball and then she lays down with her paws over the edge of the stairs with the ball in her mouth, and then she spits it out onto the edge of the stairs and then nudges it with her nose until it falls <laughs> down the stairs. Da, 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 Amazing. To you. Then you catch it, uh -huh. and then you throw it back to her. She gets up, she catches it again, and then she lays down, and then she... We never taught her this. This is just a thing mm. she figured out, okay? And so now she girl. wants to play this game every night. How my wife has never recorded this, I don't know. <laughs> It's unreal. totally okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all right. Adam Dickerson. Real question is what is a good alternative color for sons of Horace green? Other paint brands are also welcome. It's a super thin paint. Yeah, buddy. Uh, the, uh, what are they? What's the actual name of this? Desaturated cool greens, the desaturated cool greens from army painters, new fanatic line. That is the answer to your question. Evergreen Fog, Medieval Forest, uh, Paragon Pine, Autumn Sage, Forest Fawn, and Mossy Green. There you go. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. 
Uh, let's go. Tyler, let's jump back over here. Okay. Okay. You, do you have, I, I wonder if maybe you have thoughts on this. Favorite models to use for AOS not made by GW? And, second question, any must-buy game aids? I know you and I are big, both big fans of, like, cool game aids. And then yes. final question, how many dice do you bring with you to a game? Okay. All right, on the dice, I have 22 sets of D6, uh, my potentially busted Sylvaneth, Alarial, uh, Sigil on the six green dice that I've had since 2016. Uh, I'm terrified to do the, you know, the, the water test with those dice because I may not want to learn what I find out. Just don't learn the answer. <laughs> they, uh, they're not that bad. I do roll terribly at times, but they, anyway, so uh, they've got a reputation. And then 25 of the Vault Wars dice. So 50 dice there. And then, yeah, D8s, uh, D20s, you know, basically wound counters, right? All that stuff. That's basically it. I try to keep it as simple as possible on dice. And... Uh, let's see. Uh, what about you on dice? And we'll Depends go on the army. So yep. for like my sons, I bring a small pack of just like I have sort of big dice that I use, and it's like twelve of them because that's all I'll ever need, right? Because right. even my cool attack is capped to ten attacks. Because why would I be allowed to have any fun? And for Skaven, I have like a tiny nuclear green big dice cube that I use. It's like thirty six dice in the cube. So I have I have different dice sets for different armies, and so it's generally somewhere between ten and then the little thirty six cube. Gotcha. Okay. And then game aids. So yes, uh, got to have a good number of three inch combat gauges. I mean, you don't have yep. to do the full Sean Clark. You don't have to go 20. You don't sure. have to have a necklace of, of combat gauges, but you got to have a good number of those. If you do. <laughs> uh, my, I already mentioned my favorite, one of my favorite possessions now is this amazing gift my family got me over the holidays, which was on Etsy. It's a, and there's different versions of this, right? I think a uh, friend of the show um, Caleb Walters mm -hmm. makes yeah. a set of, yeah, these measuring sticks of different sizes. Yes, he does. So that's amazing, right? Like, okay, I need to move six inches. You just, yeah, get the six inch out. So highly recommend that. That can... Dorkdom beautiful. Gaming. There you go. On Dorkdom Etsy. Gaming on Dorkdom, Etsy. Uh, it is dorkdomgaming.etsy.com. I use them all the time now. They are awesome. Uh, yep. Love those measuring sticks. A plus stuff from Caleb. Yes. Dorkdomgaming.etsy.com. Check them out. Yeah. Really helps with playing clean Warhammer, right? With with precise measurements. So you just lay that stick down you, and then you put your index finger, thumb, whatever, to where your model is going to go. Move the stick, move the model. Very easy. Uh, tokens, we talked a lot about. I'm mean, obviously, it goes without saying tokens. So personally, I will have, so like Legion of Night, right? I've got, I don't know, 14 different spells. I have each spell named. Blizzard, etc. I lay all those out uh, in front of me, and then I'll try to in advance, you know, specify or like Manfred. I'm, I'll put Waste Away and uh, Mystic Shield next to Manfred, right? Because that's my game plan is to cast those, with, just to try to speed up and and reduce sure. uh, the time that I'm taking and trying to select my spells in the order of those spells. But yeah, uh, pre-written tokens. You like the erasable tokens? Yep, little dry uh, erase magnets, one and a half inch by two inch. Fantastic. Yep. A plus, you carry these with you. You just write little, or I don't think they're that big. I think it's the smaller ones, but like one inch by an inch and a half, I think. Sorry, one inch by an inch and a half. You can just write on there the little bonus or buff or penalty yep. and slide it next to the unit and then whoosh, wipe it away when it's done. So I've got to mention, this is the first person in the community that I've seen do this. Obviously, you can go on Amazon and do that, but who wants to do that? Go If you want to get some of these, go to Battleworks, W-E-R-K-S, as in Sam.com. That's Jeff with Austin Weird Knobs. Oh, nice. He's got a, a new website. Yeah, with some of this. He's got Erasable Tokens, dude. And it's, it's a great pack. It's a very cheap price uh, and a bunch of other cool things that he's got going on over there. But yeah, any any others? Things come to mind as far as tokens, game aids? No, I think that's you pretty much covered everything. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And then favorite may, models to use for AOS not made by GW. I mean, probably creature caster stuff for the big demons. That's that's pretty yeah. easy. I like a lot of those guys. Uh, okay. Uh, hypo, hypothermic ice. Uh, here's a hobby question. How do you force yourself to power through building models, especially when they're poorly engineered? It's tough. It's tough. Like uh, That is to say, the building phase is not a thing I enjoy. One option, find a friend who loves building. Have them build it for you. That's always fun. If somebody, Some people really like building. If you don't have such a friend, 
just remember that like you got to do the building to get to the good stuff which is the painting and then the playing right so it's it's kind of just sit down you take a day you get into the zen of it like and 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 just start assembling i think is really what it is there is sort of mm-hmm. a zen in mo- uh, zen in the art of motorcycle maintenance quality to it i think that you can get into uh okay tyler apparently you're borg uh donny rongo says do you use moxfield yes i do uh, how dumb is shield with the apocalypse? I mean, she's pretty dumb, but it's fine. She's just a creature. Mm-hmm. You know, she dies for removal. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, ba bum bum ba bum bum. Do you think that AOS should get upgrade sprues like 40k? Maybe Thunders get a separate box for their weapon options. No, I just don't think there's enough of a market there to actually support that, and mm-hmm. I don't want that level of granularity. Like, I just make a new kit or don't make it is my answer. Yeah. Would worry about that making its way into rules and just adding more rules complexity. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, by the way, Gareth says building is better than painting. That's yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's that's there you go. Uh, Talon Zon says loosened from game envy, game envy to replace my dying Nefati. Yes or no, Vince? Um, I'm gonna blind everybody here for a second. <laughs> yes. There will be a video on that coming sometime in the future. I love the Lucent light from Game Envy. I think it's just like the best light they've just just ever. It's wonderful and fantastic, and I love it. I just think it's amazing. Um, I feel like we need to have Gareth Gareth on again at some point so that he can tell us all the different, like the current state of competitive AOS and like how we're behind and what we need to update in our priors on, like our anchoring is off, right? Maybe we need, we need to make that an annual thing where he comes on and tells us how stupid we are. And uh, we need to get updated. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, Edgar says, will I, will we ever see a game from Snarling Badger that plays more like a miniature board game? For example, like Kingdom Death. I love how the AI system works in KDM and would love to see something similar. I, I'm not going to say no. It's certainly... I, I uh, Like, we don't constrain ourselves to anything other than we're not going to make army games. Probably. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. that's as much as we do. Like whatever the game demands is what we will do. So I wouldn't write anything off. There you go. Um, have we made a video on the new Triumph and Treachery yet? If not, when we talked about it as part of the actual review um, of the Mad King Rises book four, and I love it. I think it's great. And in fact, oh, I played a game of it last weekend and had a fantastic time. So there you go. Nice. Uh, that's right. what I'll say. It was the, I, we played one of the four new <clears throat> battle plans and man, was it really fun. No battle tactics, cool, different things to gain objectives, like different things. It was really legitimately a great time. So there you go. Awesome. I still got to read that stuff and watch, watch that. Yep. Uh, Pat noon. Here's a question for you, Tyler. Will there be GTs mm. that use the War Coda rules specifically? Well, I mean, I've not blackmailed anybody or, yeah, come up with a scheme to make that happen. I did see Jeff, uh, just mentioned Jeff. Uh, he's actually doing Smash and Bash GT with War Coda this year. I just saw he announced his event yesterday evening and <laughs> sold out in, I don't know, like 15 minutes. He's only got space for 50 people. It was a whole thing. He had to do a small event this year. They're going to have a bigger venue next year. Uh, I think one of the other events in the Texas scene swapped uh, dates with him, so enabled him to right, get a better date, better better potential for venues. So, yes, uh, Smash and Bash GT is going to be doing that. I think he's in April, I believe, his event, sometime around there. Nice. April, nice. May. Yeah. So he chose some good ones. Okay. Very nice. J-Raps, I want to get away from being a base coat wash dry brush painter. It feels formulaic. Mm -hmm. A new model is an already solved problem. Where should I start? Uh, I've got many videos on, like, painting in alternate ways, but probably with wet blending and actually trying to, like, paint the light. Again, painting is really all about actually, like, it's just capturing the light. All of this is just about the light. Once you understand the light, everything else falls into place. Color doesn't Mm -hmm. actually matter. Paint doesn't actually matter. You know, the only thing that matters really is the light. And so, um, you know, just put yourself in that mindset try to do like do something with a slightly more unusual lighting scheme and try to capture that in some way through value changes on the figure um and and paint just all through layers or something like that as opposed to through those steps uh Bronu said i'd like to see a few of the mortal wounds in the game be auto wounds instead and still have the save yeah i agree like i think we could move yeah. a lot of mortal wounds to auto wounds like if if like the old poison attacks in what what is now the old world or 
uh, what you yeah. see Warhammer Fantasy Battles like. Roll a six to hit, it's an auto wound. You still get your saves and everything, but it just skips the wound roll. Yeah, great. Yeah, that feels good. It does. I really um, like that as a rule. Yeah. So, ready for Hammer Hall. Uh, what, one thing. I actually had a question earlier. Let me let me ask you this, Viz. Uh, he basically, uh, Paul asked, what was our our favorite guest from a past Warhammer Weekly? Uh, the first one that just at least popped in my head uh, was... Oh, crap. I'm forgetting the guy's name. It was a very stats-heavy show uh, talking about why some of the You're talking about assumptions... JP? JP. JP Gannis. That's what it was. Yep. Yeah. I, I can't, you could probably do a better job of summarizing that show, but I loved the hell out of that show. It was amazing. That was a, that was a great show. Absolutely. I, I agree. Um, that one was quite a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, honestly, we've had such a great time with, with so many guests. We've been sort of remiss on guests this year because I've been super duper busy with like work and everything else. But we've got some plans for, for, for some really fun and interesting guests, I think, this year. And, um, you know, all in all, I just I love when people bring their own unique voice to the show. That's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. So and, and that's it's it's we've had many that, that do that in a, in a great way and that I, I want to have back this year. Uh, I got one here. Politically, JC politically, Effrey, politically. if Snarling Badger were to write a historical or para historical war game, what time period alt history would you prefer? Simple. It would be set in 1500 and Rome never falls. And so it's a sci fi space game. Easy easy money no dark ages no technological regression rome is in space and bringing the centurions to to civilize the galaxy all right we're caught up mostly another twitter one uh yeah let's do a twitter one here you go okay uh carter babs which paint brand is the overall winner best product i mean i'll answer this one quickly my mm -hmm. top three paint brands are army painter fanatic ak third gen and monument pro acryl in no particular order all three of those, you, you can buy into any of those ranges you want. They're all excellent. I use all three of them interchangeably. I love all three of them. They are all fantastic paints. Period. Get whatever one you like that is near you, that is available, that you like the company the best. Um, so, mm. there you go. Uh, Amber Pawn, how did you Vince do the faux Grecian temple bases for Daughters of Cain? Amber, I have a, a video on it in the Hobby Cheating playlist. So you can go back and actually check that out. But it was with green stuff and roller and just some like wedding cake columns and stuff like that. Like it's simple stuff. Um, you can get those little or like fishbowl decorations, like all those kinds of things. Uh, okay. All right. I'm scrolling back to the end here. Uh, okay. <laughs> Cygnus says Vince obviously thinks about the Roman Empire frequently. I most certainly do. I absolutely do. Uh -huh. And I always have, and y'all, the all people who are coming late to this party, I've been talking about the Roman Empire since I was very young. Okay. Uh, Tyler, I wonder if you have an answer for this one. I thought about this, mm. and I don't know that I have a good answer to it. Short King said, what is the wildest or most improbable AOS game moment you've witnessed or experienced? Oh, God. Oh, okay. Well... It's, I mean, it's going to be impossible to come up with the most. I could, let me, I could say the most recent. So the most recent was watching Laukavai, whom okay. is still disrespected by the Soulblight community because I don't see her in enough list. Sure. She is an absolute rock star. Almost tanking both activations from six Vanguard and both activations from 10 Chosen. In a single combat phase. It's pretty impressive. She died. She died basically to the wound. Now he was rolling below average on the mortals, right? From the chosen. The six is to hit. Uh she's only got eleven wounds and, and a six up ward. But yeah, she she is phenomenal. More people need to run her. She's an amazing pin piece. Uh the rim reduction, right? You can save stack with her. Put Mystic Shield on her. You go out, have save stack her. She's a pin piece. Uh, she's a meaningful hammer within soul blight that's generally struggling for hammers because they need to be because that you don't want that army to be an insane dps army uh, on top of everything else that it's doing and how well it scores so but yeah she's out, outstanding dude i love her nice nice uh yeah i mean i remember i had a katachin silly like soldier back playing 40k that like 
brought down the avatar of Kane with a shuffle. I thought that was pretty fun after throwing like a demo satchel charge at it. And then I just rolled perfectly and he failed all his saves. You know, it's always those That's... unusual dice moments, right? That, that, that stick yeah. out. Um, I mean, I remember my bad luck. Like I finally got the, that giant mortal wound, uh, slam off from, uh, my son's guy that's like 5d6 yeah. damage or whatever the the big hit mm-hmm. that's like 5d6 damage and i rolled one 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 uh <laughs> three nice. oh. so i was like oh okay and then what's that three doing there yeah it was like you know i i really <laughs> spoiling it so it wasn't just the perfect five damage right <laughs> you know i i remember things like that um but it's hard to say like that. I, I mean, I, you play AOS for the, the, those improbable moments, you know, you hope for them all the time and you hope your opponent never gets them right for the, the, the single clan rat living and holding up the, the entire enemy force or, or whatever. Right. You right. Know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. The, the, the Griffon that kills Archeon. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, okay. Uh, Nicholas Wilson after wins, what should be the two tiebreakers for GTs? Tyler, you got a thought on this one? Yeah, I know Gareth's in here. I know. I bet he's got thoughts. But I mean, uh, this I've got this sounds answer. like a sounds like a Haywell plant preaching the the good gospel from the one and only Haywell. Which on, is which, none. Way, none is the correct answer. None. There are no tiebreakers. <laughs> it's just um, the people who get five zero or play more games. That's it. At big tournaments, you just play more games until you get to a winner. At uh, at, at, at other tournaments that happen to be in the middle, you just win. If you're 5-0, you win. Congratulations. That's so again, uh, a lot of shout-outs for Jeff tonight with Austin Weird Knobs being a, being a pioneer on, on multiple fronts. Dude, Jeff is the first GT that I have seen implement the Haywo approach. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, it's like, I can remember what, what his names were, but, uh, you, you know, tournament champions, multiple champions. Who are, there's going to be multiple 5-0s, like 50, 50 players, probably going to be two 5-0s, right? Mm-hmm. All those equal. So you got two tournament champions in the 5-0 bracket, and then, yeah, you have the bracket for four ones. It's very complicated. Very, I don't know. I don't know if we can we can run with this. It's just a little too complicated, Vince. Yeah, it's it's real hard. It's real tough. Yeah, exactly. Real hard. Um, but yes, that's like, that's it. I mean, obviously it's something huge, like, you know, at, at Adepticon or at LBO and all these kinds of things, you, you run the normal eight, nine, you know, uh, sure. eight rounds with a breaker round as well for the, the potential ninth round for somebody and you get to the real winner. Like that's the answer. That's how it should be done. Right. That's playing the correct number of rounds when, when that's not possible, when you have two day weekend GTs with like, you know, 60 people, um, you just, if you happen to have two five O's, congratulations, you're both winners. Well done. Like, Okay. <laughs> You both win because that's it. Unless you unless you both want to play another game against each other, you sure. both win. That's it. Tournament over. Go home. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Battle Awards, Mega Boss, 5-0. If there are two 5 players, they will both receive this award. Big Boss, 401. That is four, four wins, no loss, one draw, or 4-1. All players win four games will receive this award. Yeah. And then it's got a bunch of others. You know, appearance, etiquette. With an etiquette, he had the sort of what often is called best overall. He calls it the Renaissance Award. Yeah, I yeah, awesome pack. That guy's that guy's great. Yeah. How should national rankings work? Both players get points for second place. Question mark. Warpstone Enjoyer says number one national rankings. Who cares? Uh, that's not a thing. This is not. We're not playing chess here. Okay. I don't care what your score is. Uh, that's like some. That's some stuff for people who are not me. Um, but whatever you want. I mean, I don't know. People who do national rankings will figure out an answer. Is my answer. Um, probably like i i mm. think such things are like that's I, yeah I, i'm not gonna get into my feelings on national rankings and why i feel they're they're like okay okay cool man it's just not your bag that's fine yeah we'll Doesn't leave it at that <laughs> all right all here's right. a good one I'm, I'm excited for this one i want to know your thoughts on this yeah um, sam on twitter asked do you think we'll have indices released for fourth edition or current battle tomes for to, will roll over uh, so nothing is 100%. I'll say 80% likely, which to me is a very high confidence interval. Getting very nerdy tonight. Uh, yes, all us equal. I think we are definitely going to have indexes for better or worse. Yep. Uh, current battle tomes will not be rolling over. They're just going to reset the cycle. Uh, this is going to be the first time that 
Matt Rose will have really gotten his hands, Matt Rose and company will have really gotten his hands into the the guts of AOS. I think there's going to be a sizable amount of structural updating to this game, uh, which will include updating all of the War Scrolls. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we're definitely getting indices. Like, mm -hmm. 100%, in my mind. I just, I don't see any of the current Battle Tomes rolling over, and I think it's for the better. Like, let's let's see what the new design team can do. We've, we've gone three editions in. It's time to, it's time to, it's time to, 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 to reinvent. Like, I'm here for yeah. it. We've sharpened the knife, we've sharpened the knife, restart it. That's what happens, so... Yep. Um, what do I think the most likely change would be that would necessitate switching to indices? Just just core mm -hmm. rules changes of, of significant types. I don't know what it'd be. Could be like weapon ranges or could be anything, right? Major changes. Yeah. I'll answer two quick questions here for JC Effrey. On fifteen hundred on fifteen hundreds Rome, what prevented the fall? The brothers Gracchi succeeding in their reforms? No earlier reforms than that. Um, probably mm -hmm. like fourth century. There's a couple of different reformers who's were sought to reverse the currency devaluation, the movements into sort of more foreign outsourced sources for armies and things like that, some of the generalship changes and how that worked, as well as taxation policies. Like, I'm assuming basically those different reform policies go into effect in around sometime around the fourth century. And so then you, instead of having a sort of more slow, constant decline, you have a higher build, uh, like you're able to bottom out and then continue back up from that point. And it's just seen like as a low point as other nations have had so there you go so we're talking sort of a unified roman empire here okay there you go that was just like a super nerdy point uh, there's this particular <laughs> emperor who's specifically tried to reform and, and before that and i can't remember exactly what his name was right now but him i need to go back and look at my notes um okay uh all right uh boop 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 uh let's go to the next page Mm -hmm. uh nap god uh do you have any recommendation for pro acryl transparent paints for uses for them yeah use them whenever you'd use an ink they're, they're basically just highly saturated transparent paints they're like inks so if you're going to use an ink you can just use them instead it's really that easy so like thin color shifts that you put through your airbrush and stuff like that they're very good or or doing filters over colors those kinds of things okay uh by the way hit like uh, do mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Uh, do oh, things that make do that. Uh C.W. Down. Kreiner said, instead of universal special rules, internal only document of USRs. I mean, I think that's just, that is going to be part of 4.0. 4, 4. I think they'll absolutely move to a unified, like, database of terminology. Like, we won't have universal special rules, but the rules will move to often just using the exact same terminology, where, as opposed to being the slapdash thing now. That could be one of the things that I think needs to happen. You know what I mean, Tyler? You with this one? Yeah, I. So you probably got it. This is. Did you get into your rationale for why you do not want to see a lot of USRs in AOS? I, in, I've in talked about it on video? previous shows. Yeah, but but. Okay. Well, well, So I've never. I don't. I don't want to get a sidetrack. It's a longer conversation itself. For what it's worth, dude. I don't really track that. Like, I don't see the gap that you're that you seem to see with universal special rules as being a lot more complicated, even meaningfully more complicated relative to the state of AOS. When I think about the state of AOS, and if I'm trying to get into this game, much less do well at tournaments, how many war scrolls, different faction, sub-faction rules, like the amount of crap. If, if Now, part of this is my bias, right? As a player, I'm always trying to minimize surprises, minimize, not gotchas, but just minimize me losing a game due to a lack of information. Mm -hmm. And... The state of AOS right now makes that, I think for a lot of people, quite a tall hurdle to overcome the amount of information that you need to be tracking. So I, I just, I don't quite understand how USRs would hurt that as opposed to make it better. I mean, my general argument is when you have 90 USRs, they're not USRs anymore, especially when they're nested in things. Uh, the other problem is mm -hmm. they tend to often limit creativity because it's just like, instead of being able to write a bespoke rule, you just end up using the USR over and over and over and over again. OK, whereas you could just use the text, but then write a modifier rule to it or something like that. But it's all on the page. The other thing is, as I've always said, hiding information off of the war scroll is problematic to me. I want all mm. of the text on there. So I don't even care if we just have the repeated text and they're like quasi effectively USRs. But I want the text yeah. on there. Right. When I when I'm looking, one of the things that does drive me crazy about the old world is my tomb guard have 14 universal special rules. 
14, Tyler. Yeah. 14. <laughs> That's a lot. Sure. Okay. And yeah. if there was a war scroll with 14 special rules on it, and it was just like one of your mainline troops. Right. You'd be like, this is insane. Yeah. Okay. But you get to hide that stuff. And that's my problem with it. Okay. So, I mean, it seems potentially sensible that they have too many. You, yeah, Sean just know that World War is too many USRs. So, okay. So I could buy that. But I can also buy that. Like, when I think about the state of Sylvaneth right now, I was, I was thinking about this. So we had, th like, freaking four Sylvaneth players that showed up on Saturday. It's like, oh, crap. I'm going to need to re refresh my memory on the state of Sylvaneth. And sure. uh, I was talking with David Sidebottom, who's been on the show. And David was, like, pointing out all of these different unique set of rules as opposed to standardized rules for who gets to teleport and under what conditions and like what conditions you can turn off terrain and what or, uh, wild woods and what conditions you can't turn off terrain and it's crazy yeah. i mean there was like five or six different exactly. examples yeah, that that kind of stuff's got to go that's got to go so standardizing yeah. the language good reminder text that's well explained on the game piece you're using at that moment which is i.e the war scroll right mm. is good okay hiding information and then stacking a hundred of these things that then get nested in each other because that's the other trick that often happens with usrs they become matroshka all right where it's like it's mm -hmm. not just one rule it's this rule means these four other rules and one of them is also two rules and it's like nope nope these are yeah. not like now we're getting stupid okay mm -hmm. so there you go yeah um so yes like that that is all where i think okay I thought this was a really good question from John Thick on Twitter. You ready for this one, Tyler? Mm -hmm. Which army has the biggest disparity between their play style and their lore? I like this one oh. a lot. I want to know what the audience thinks on this one, too. If you're watching right now, what's your vote for the biggest disparity between like the way the army's described, its story, how it allegedly plays in the narrative or acts in the narrative, and how it actually plays on the table? I have an answer to this. I thought I've been this one bounced around in my head from the time he asked it. Okay, yeah, why don't you start and I'll think about it. Slaves to Darkness. Okay, interesting. Let me sell you on why. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the lore, they are sort of this unstoppable chaos force of that that relies on like the sort of iron wall, the wall of steel, like warriors are unbreakable. You know, the Varen Guard mm. are like literally one in ten million. Mm. Okay. Warriors rise to the level of a Varen guard. That's that's the ratio we're talking about. Archeon <laughs> is the Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse who only shows up at the most critical of times. But at like throughout S2D's history, it is consistently never played like this. Chaos Warriors are always um, trash. Knights are mostly trash. Like they have occasionally been okay at best. Um, it, like Chosen, who are rarefied, are often the go-to unit now, but they were basically garbage for a long time. Varengard often have shown up in numbers that are just completely mm. insanity, right? Where it's sure. like the entire army is basically Varengard running around. Mm. Like, what is this? Archeon, for yeah. some amount of time, was just in every army. He was just in like at like 80% of S2D lists. It's, again, this isn't current. At some point in time, mm. had Archeon shown up, he was leading every skirmish force left, right, and center. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's, it just does not, it is never played. Or, or, or it was just all Marauders all the time when Marauder spam was like a dumb thing you could do. Right, forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget. And, and so, yeah. like, it's just you know, it's almost never played like it acts in the story at all. Mm. Right. Uh, Pat Noon says so. There would be thirty-three Varen Guard in the USA at that ratio. Well, you're assuming that all that's one in a million. No, no, it's one in ten million of the Chaos Warriors become Varen Guard. So, like, I don't know how many Chaos Warriors there are in the U.S., but I'm assuming that means at least some kind of soldier or warrior or something. So it's even lower than you think. Uh, yeah. What, what's your what's your vote here? So that resonates a lot, and it's kind of made me feel like a cop-out, but I think the flip side of that coin is Stormcast, mm -hmm. and Stormcast is the the best one that I can think of as having a disconnect. Uh, we've we have also talked a lot about that, right? Where sure. just the ba the baseline of uh, Stormcast just had an incredible weekend, multiple five O's, multiple four ones. You can fit so much crap in a Stormcast list right now. Sure, and they you can readily get to your five out of five and your Grand Strat. They're very competitive at the moment, and they're right there that way because they've had multiple rounds of point drops. Yep, they're so so many things are too cheap. So yeah, I think there's a sizable disconnect similarly on the on the order side with stormcast kind of similar to your 
your slaves of darkness on chaos. Yeah, those are actually the really the the. Does anything else stand out? It's the I mean, space marine most... problem. I agree. Like somebody, William Hatton said it. Yeah. Some other people said it. I do agree. It's a space marine problem. There were multiple votes for corn because corn plays like such a a, a more thinking man's yeah. battle, right? It it is a very carefully orchestrated force as opposed to like a ah, you know, <laughs> like I don't know how else to yeah. say it. That's kind of what it feels like it should be, but I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like. I think those are the big two. I think those are really the two offenders. Um, okay. Forge of Wonders said, Hey, Vince. Hey, what's up, by the way? How you doing there, Forge? Uh, it's good to see you, buddy. Um, have you played a handful of Old World games already? Yes, I've played played multiple, actually, now. Where I'm going to play another game uh, this weekend, actually. This is my this is my Old World weekend. Last weekend was AOS. I'm just kind of alternating is what's happening, and just kind of incidentally, and it's not, not planned, just what, what happens. Uh, if so, what aspect have you uh, of it has you most intrigued? I really like the whole game. I love playing my Tomb Kings again. I think it's a very fun game. We had a truly wild game where the battle plan was so impactful because mm. the game we played, Tyler, like imagine my square is the battlefield, right? My 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 picture. This yeah. and this were solid rock, so you couldn't you can't mm-hmm. move off of them. Okay. Okay. Meaning you couldn't yeah. flee off of them unless you could fly. Okay. Yeah. And we read that at the beginning, and we were like, that doesn't matter. Okay, whatever, cool. And then, like, partway through the game, just this most insane series of panic tests and fleas happened, and, like, my Bretonian knights, like, fled and then bounced off the wall and had to reform and then turned around and managed to get back in the fight, and, like, his unit got mm-hmm. stranded, and it was just, like, it was crazy. I do, I I really have come to love the psychology aspect of it. Like, it's, the, the, the way that they built the psychology system is complicated to explain, but it is very, very, very fun. Like the giving it, ground is, versus the being broken versus the flee and and, yeah. and turn around, whatever. I don't remember. The is name. it fair to say that it has it has a sizable impact on the yeah. game? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, so I've tried to watch quite a few battle reports with the old world, and I mean, as you know, I had a twenty that traditional twenty year gap, but I, I do have fond memories of playing Warhammer Fantasy back in the day. But just relative to my eight years of sensibilities with the dynamism of AOS, AOS has its problems, but I do think generally AOS is pretty... Dude, I I just find those videos so boring. I, <laughs> find it so I get it. So goddamn boring watching the old world. It feels like nothing's going on. A unit gets into combat, it rolls a few dice. It's kind of cool yep. to see that we're not chucking 200 dice, but Oh I yeah, know, I've never used more times. than 10 dice for a game of old world. It's not necessary. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's like, oh, okay, so this unit just got ran down and got destroyed. Like, that's where things have been happening is because we're like, psychology or fleeing. And, that and is stuff because, like that. Yeah, Tyler, <sighs> the appropriate way to do a battle report for the old world is like uh, Once Bitten 360 used to do it, like OB used to do it, which is just okay. a slideshow. Okay. Right? Of then my okay. unit moved here, this happened, then my unit moved here. 20 minutes, you recounting the major beats of the game where you just take a picture every every X amount of time yeah. in the game and you just slide show through it. Like you're like you're you're at your grandma and grandpa's house watching their trip to the Grand Canyon. Like that's <laughs> that's the appropriate way to do a battle report for that. In real time it is painfully boring to watch. I really engaging to play, but painfully boring to watch. Because it doesn't have I, yeah, the I, swingy I, careful you like yeah. finesse moves that AOS has. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know Melnick and you are having a blast with it. Other friend Chuck, other friends are. So I, I want to try it sometime. I mean, clearly you guys have similar sensibilities usually to me as well. So I'm sure I would enjoy it. But yeah, I just, I, ugh, just terrible to watch. I uh, yeah. again, understandable. <laughs> understandable. We we need we need OB back making them slideshow battle reports. All right. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Let's see. Uh. Badoop. 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 Hades had said, Corn has never been and never will be a berserker. He's the god of war in all facets, and I will die on this hill. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. That's fine. I mean, like, that's that's why I don't think Corn is up there. I do think, though, that, like, he's a little bit of a berserker god. He did, he has blood for the mm. blood god and skulls for the throne of Corn, and he cares not from whence the blood flows. That's not the Red Knight from Forgotten Realms, who's, like, the master of tactical warfare. Like, I agree they don't have to be bloodthirsty lunatics at every moment in time, but, like, they mm. are somewhat bloodthirsty lunatics, man. It's an army of Vikings and marauders <laughs> and stuff like that and, like, people who worship blood and skulls and a god that revels in even its own people being killed. So let's not... This isn't Napoleon, okay? He's... It's, it's not, like... This isn't Julius Caesar, the engineer general, who's going to win the double encirclement, 
Okay, let's just keep the Rome thing alive. Like, that's not... If Corn gets double encircled, he dies. He loses. That's it. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so let's not overplay our hand here a little bit, Hades. Like, I agree, intelligent warfare is some part of his aspect. They don't, they're don't. they not all, like, ravenous, mindless lunatics. But that is, an, that is a pretty big part of what's going on here at the same time. It's not only that, but it's part of it. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Sean, watching Old World is like watching golf. Not bad if you're really into it. Otherwise, very boring. Yeah. Yeah. Check, checks out. Uh, I'll, yeah, Brenna, I'll give Tabletop Tactics a try. I have generally loved their stuff over the over the years. It's more casual, but yeah, yeah they do a great job with it, keeping it fun and light. Uh, cool. Can we? Uh, are we ever going to? Are we ever going to get to any mine? I'm just going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, we're going to. We're getting there. We're only like okay. two hours into this. We're good. Okay. We time. All right. Uh, I got I to gotta annoy you every once in a while. I got to get to the point. You're, we're getting I there. get to the point where I ignore you like 10% of the amount that Tomic. We're going to be in a great place. Absolutely. Dance has <laughs> said non-hobby related, but did you see Dune 2 yet? Yeah, I saw it. It was it was really good. I like Dune. I love I love the novel. Um wasn't as, I didn't like it as much as the first one. Uh and Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Visually Usually, one of the most incredible movies ever created. Story-wise there were changes made there that I I think actually are, I don't love as much, but that's for a different show. There you go. Fair enough. Uh, Russell Crowe. Hey, thanks for watching. Loved you in The Mummy. Uh, why don't man-eaters uh, have the gut buster keyword, and when do we write? Uh, they should. Simple story. Uh, Brent, wait. our good buddy Brent. Wait, 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 wait. You just had a reference that made no sense. Wait, oh, you're talking about the Tom Tom Cruise mummy? He was in Tom Cruise mummy? Correct. He was, Russell he was, Crowe? He was, oh my God. Okay. He was Dr. That, Jekyll. That, that mummy doesn't exist. Is that actually worth watching? I haven't watched it. No, it's that. an absolutely terrible movie. That's why that's why the joke is funny, Tyler. If I had referenced if I said I loved you in Gladiator, everybody loved him in Gladiator, Tyler. That's not okay, funny. Okay. You okay. see, by saying I loved you in the mummy, okay. that's what's I'm a, funny. I'm a little slow. Okay. I got you now. All right. Stick Thank with you. me. <laughs> okay. Brent from Rerolling Ones. What is the best war scroll? What is the worst war scroll? I love this question. And because he's like, somebody asked him, oh somebody God. asked him like, in what way do you mean? And he's like, I don't know, whatever you want, man. <laughs> like, yes, this is the way to ask a question. Okay. What is the best war scroll, Tyler? What's the best war scroll? The worst war, well. Okay. Yeah, or worst. Not... I, I can, you can do the what worst... you want first. war scroll that popped in my head is the Crypt Gas Courtier. But I did see Kel, I think it was Kel, <laughs> He actually had it in his list. I don't know what it was doing. Sure. It was doing something, I guess, in helping the ghouls out. But yeah, that that war scroll felt like it should not exist in, the, in an otherwise beautiful battle tomb in Flesh Eater Courts. Uh, so that popped in there. Sure. You got one that pops in? I'll have to think about best. Worst war scroll? Uh, the Knight Relictor? How about that guy? Is that guy going <laughs> to get in there? Or what's the, what's the other one? The Knight... No, it's the, it's the Knight Arcanum. That's the more appropriate one. No, no, not the, the Knight Arcanum. No, the one that's just like... Oh. He has a stick that literally does nothing. I don't, I don't know. Like, there's a couple of Stormcast heroes, easily the worst War Scrolls, because they do right. almost literally nothing. Yeah. Uh, that's a great question, though. Let's see. What else? Yeah, Stormcast, a good shout out. I have to look back here. Stalling for time. Hold for time, please. Yes, oh, yes, uh, yes, Cygnus. Jokes are way better when they're explained in depth. I agree. Um... <laughs> The, what's the best war scroll? Okay, so let me say for me, right? Yeah. What I look for in the best war scroll is what wars. Uh, what war scroll am I looking at? Yeah, it might be Lord Exorcist Cygnus. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Thank you, thank you. Oh, probably. That's yeah. absolutely right. Okay. At any rate, the best war scroll to me is the war scroll that I look at and I read it and I'm like, yes. This is that thing so perfectly, and I am so excited to play with that thing, right? Yeah. It's the combination of, like, exciting mechanics that's the perfect, like, the perfect sort of Melvin, everything is working and humming together uh, of, of mm. what's going on, where it just all feels like, yes, this is exactly that thing, right? Mm -hmm. I think that, that to me, is, is the War Scrolls that I, I really love. So I don't know. Um, and, you know, to that end, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so a recent one is Belthanos to me. Mm -hmm. I thought like on many levels, that war scroll showed almost a new level of quality 
yep. of capability, right? And it hit on the most critical level of opening up a new play space uh, with the army. It is not an insane hammer. It's a moderate hammer. Like he can pop off, he can do some work, sure. but he's not right. His, his spike is, is not like spirit of dirt spike potentially. So it, yeah, yeah. Just on many levels, man, that war scroll was phenomenal. And Ionis is similar. Yep. Like, I think absolutely. No, I, I agree. Especially on Belthanos. I think he's just such a beautifully designed scroll. I really do. I yeah. agree. Um, like, because he, he feels cool. He feels fun. He opens up avenues of play for the army. It feels like it's, you're playing that thing. He's, he's just, it's really good. I think Scarbrand would be in the discussion. I just think Scarbrand is mm. on an almost perfectly designed war scroll. Um, you know, carnage and just like the names of his axes and, and all of this stuff and the way he just levels anything he hits, like as he gets yeah. more and more angry. And the only thing, the only thing that robs him from being number one is they removed the, the names for his levels. You know, he used to be like oh, angry yeah. and then furious and then he'd get to incandescent, which I just thought was like the funniest thing <laughs> to be. Absolutely. He's incandescent. Um, Celesque, you mentioned it earlier. I really do love Celesque mm -hmm. and like the nature of the balance between the two of them. Yeah. And that's the rules that flow out from them. And it's just a cool war scroll in the way it works and the way it attacks and stuff like that. Um, uh, and, well, on Slanesh, I was trying to uh, another one, maybe worse. I mean, Shalaxi, like she's Shalaxi there, is completely right? the worst. Yeah, I mean, she's absolutely <laughs> just terrible. The worst alignment of, of what I'm describing, a thousand percent. Um, but uh, to flip side to stand Slanesh, I mean, obviously, I do love Slanesh. But um, mm -hmm. the my other my other two quick mentions here would be the Arch Warlock because I just think he's a really cool guy and does really cool things with all mm -hmm. his overcharge for like his halberd and uh, and <clears> like you know, the, the kind of things he does. Um, but also the mask. Like, I just think the mask for being yeah. a simple war scroll for, like, a 100-point hero is incredibly impactful. She's cool. She mm -hmm. goes happy and sad based on her little mask that she flips around and which face she's using. You know, she's got the mm -hmm. word saved from her dance and all of that stuff. Um, I just think she's really cool. So, Okay. I've I played so many games with... I always hated Manfred. Uh, sure. always hated Manfred. I played, yeah, against, yeah. I played against Manfred so much over the years. I have now playing him. I mean, I've gotten probably 60 games in with this SOB. I mean, I, I'd i be hard pressed to find a war scroll that better encapsulates what just a complete, you know, SOB that he truly sure, is. Sure, like a jerk. What an yeah. Absolute asshole he is. <laughs> how he plays on the table, how annoying he is. He's the worst. Yeah. And it's amazing. He's Manfred, so you're fun the to worst. <laughs> so fun to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah like he's he's got to be up there for me yeah okay nice uh all right um let's see here old town throwdown there we go gareth what's up buddy it's probably still in the chat uh should events do more to ban the whack painting brigade from ruining the enjoyment of casual hobbyists now i think i'm not sure gareth if you meant this as a joke or not but i kept this in here because i actually think you have you're you're, you're on to a relative point that I actually do think is worth discussing here. Um, I, I and if you're if I'm if I'm hitting the serious point you're making then then we're in alignment. So, I think maybe what he's talking about is people who have like one really 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 nicely painted army, and mm. they tend to use it for like a really mm. long time, taking it to sort of tournament after tournament after tournament after tournament, and sort of dominating the hobby meta right, at that mm. tournament, and making it so no one else can kind of move up and, and challenge them on that space. Now, on one hand, you could say, well, if that's happening, you know what the army is, and usually you know what you have to paint to beat it. But I do think mm. it's legitimate to, like, limit, in the same way, at a painting competition, you can't enter the same fig multiple times if you won. Uh, okay? Mm. Like, no painting competition allows you to re-enter a winning fig the next year. It, it doesn't mm. happen. And so I would be perfectly fine with like tournaments saying you can't ever win more than once with a particular army in a, in a hobby award. I, and mm. like, as I very much bring one new army a year, like I, that's how I challenge myself to paint a new army in a year. And like, I, I cycle it through the tournaments for that year, right? I start at one event. And then I, by the time I come back to that first event, the next year I have a new army, right? And I do think that that's a problem if somebody's just, like, taking the same army over and over again. And, like, 
I don't have a problem with be saying like, you know, if you have this great army and it's beautiful and it wins something, mm-hmm. you can't win at this at this same tournament again. If you go to a different tournament, you can go win there, right? Like that's fine. You can take your army around and do the circuit. Just like I can take my things that won Golden Demon and go take them to, you know, the Capitol Palace yeah. or something, right? I mean, yeah. that's fine. You're going to have different competition at different tournaments and in the same way you're going to have... In the same way your your 5-0 list at one tournament, you might take it to another tournament the next weekend and not go 5-0 because you face different matches and different events and different people, right? So that's fine. Right. Um, And so, like, I, I do think it's absolutely relevant to to say this army can't win more than once this award in this tournament ever i think that's fine i would be completely mm-hmm. supportive of that yeah yeah that I, seems that's reasonable. that's my answer yeah. Gareth. yeah yeah like exactly yeah. prana said yeah you can win for a year and then you go paint a new thing yeah exactly like if you don't want to paint a new thing that's fine don't paint a new thing it just means you can't win the hobby awards you can still win other things like you can win best general or whatever right like <laughs> go nuts yeah, I don't know about the whole like one year thing, but the idea of you can't win the award again at the same tournament that resonates a lot. Yeah, that's all. I think I think that's yeah. simple. Yeah, yeah, reasonable. Okay, ready to roll. What change would you make want to see in fourth that would make AOS more fun? Not necessarily more balanced or a better game, though. Ideally, that should also come a better magic system. Easy answer. That's it. Like, if they just literally somehow lift and shifted the old world's magic system, not that they should, I would be like, well, that's a marked improvement. It doesn't have to be that, but we could do different things. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it. Uh, main thing comes to mind as usual, like, make the game function uh, within two and a half hours sure make it faster at, at a tournament make yep. it faster like that that's at a very high level but this we should be able to play competitive tournament games two and a half hours most players should be able to do that it's gonna be tough uh, one of the main ways we'd have to do that is like vastly reduce the size of the armies in some degree like points would have to go way up or or dice rolling has to go way down dice rolling is the major time suck like if you actually the interesting thing yeah. to me about chess clocks has nothing to do with monitoring your turn i would love to I, what i actually want to do what i'd love to do mm is have a time and motion study of where are people spending their time and their turns. That would be very useful. Yeah, yeah. is it battle tactics? Is it deployment? Yeah. My suspicion is it's happening completely in the dice rolling. We roll so many mm. dice, and then we re-roll them, and then we roll them again, and we remove these things, and we pick. Like, when you're rolling 40 dice, and you have to hit, and you're pulling out the three ups, that takes a long time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is, I, I noticed this, Tyler, because of the old world. Because I never mm-hmm. basically roll more than 10 dice in the old world, combat is so fast. <laughs> it's fair. like, blop, blop, your turn, blop, go. Right. Right? Because yeah. when, you're, when the number of dice you're rolling is five, it's just really easy to figure yeah. out which are hits and which are misses. Right. Three hits. There's been some games with, yeah, with Soul Blight where I decide, just to save time, all right, I'm not going to roll for these skeletons. I'm not even going to roll for these zombies. Sure. Because, right, they're going to do maybe like, I'm not going to roll 40 dice to get two damage through. Yep. I'll just, yeah, like, just just move on. But, yeah. All right. That would Twitter... also be an interesting... Yeah, go ahead. No, no, that's fine. Twitter questions done. Boom. This is Tyler's first page of his wall of questions. <laughs> uh, go. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Alex V has a question for me. How did you get started with publishing games in Snarling Badger? Adam came to me with a game idea. I said, yeah, during during COVID, I said, yeah, sounds like a cool idea. I think we can do something there. And then we decided to make a company and, and do it full time. And after we made the first one, we were like, do you want to keep doing this? And I was like, yeah, this is a lot of fun. Let's keep doing it. That's it. Um, I don't know where to start for publishing and bringing my mid-fidelity assets to high-fidelity. It's tough. Now, actual game design, like there's probably a whole show on that and like the lessons of game design and how to actually design your game. But my short answer is just write the game and then get feedback and test it and go through all the normal you know, sort of uh, elements of it. And your first games will be terrible. Just terrible. Mm. That's that's what I would say. Like, they will be really bad unless you're some kind of Mozart sort mm-hmm. of, you know, sort of uh, genius, right? Uh, for lack of the... Mm. I can't find the word. Impresario. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Um, mm. So, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Tyler, next question from Alex. 
What brought you guys to AOX, AOS initially, and why did you stay? <laughs> so I, most of my professional life, I just worked, 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 worked. I wanted to actually do something purely for fun. Uh, or Yeah. And that was the thing from my childhood that I loved. So when I moved back to Missouri, I made a commitment that I was going to get back into a hobby that I loved. And it was War Dollies. Mm -hmm. And then I stayed because... Well, this, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm very easily manipulated, Vince. I don't know if you know this, to be sincere and earnest. Okay. So maybe we can just, maybe we can just skip the next two minutes of me getting earnest and sincere and just, you know, and just, you just imagine what I might say. The community. <laughs> the community is what The community. Your... Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's right. That's, that's going to be my answer too. That's obviously. What brought me to AOS yeah. is I played Warhammer for since 1990 eight or whatever so like it was just it was like well i'm gonna keep playing this game this is the new version of this game so i'm gonna keep playing this game and yeah. the community and the friends i've made along the way are incredible like I, I don't i couldn't imagine leaving this community i i have too much fun with it yeah uh final question from alex what are your favorite parts of aos and core frustrations well this may surprise you tyler i know we haven't talked <laughs> about it much but i just feel like i should get it out here my core frustrations are with the magic system and battle tactics. I don't know if I've mentioned either of these before, uh -huh. but I would say those are my core frustrations. Yeah, checks out. Uh, favorite parts for you? Uh, I love a lot of the armies. I love how much some of the armies feel like correct when, when they yeah. nail it, when they get it aligned. I love the, like, some of the armies are really, really fun to play. Like, I do love playing my Skaven, even though the book feels very sort of punishing sometimes to play against certain armies. Yeah um you know like when 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 i have my armies that are like i feel like are, are well designed books or, or they align well with my personality i just i love playing them and i love doing what they do i like the yeah. primary loop of the game i think it's really good yeah that makes sense yeah i think one of my favorite things about aos isn't necessarily the well, it's, it's, it's about the game but not necessarily the game itself or specific aspects of the game it's Again, you've got me to earn a uh, space here. It's it's watching the game played beautifully by skilled players. So, for example, like watching watching Ridge play Skaven versus oh gosh, I'm forgetting his name. The fellow who finished top eight at LVO, who plays Corn, and he was on one of the recent season of War Games, and mm -hmm. they just had this incredible high skilled game. It's it's amazing to watch the game, at least for me right, at the highest level, particularly when it's really good sportsmanship, right? And you kind of mirror those together, which they had. And the, yeah, so I, I just, I love seeing people play their armies exceptionally well. Like I played this guy, Luke, with Stormcast. He just played it beautifully. Like it's it's amazing to see people who really know how to play their armies well. I really love that. I, I think the, 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 the game can, yeah. Yeah, it can sing. It can be artistic huge. when you watch somebody who really knows what they're doing, do what they're doing. I agree. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Grumbling Dad, punk rock fire slayers using green, pink, fluorescent. Good or bad idea? No, nope, neither. Great idea. Great idea. I'm, I'm <laughs> here for it, 100%. Uh, Brendan M., what's the one lesson you think GW has learned that you are excited for them to unlearn, and why is it max size units discounts? Well, first of all, no. Nobody in the show, nobody, any, no, no sane person should ever defend max size units discounts. That was a terrible idea, and I'm glad we got rid of it. Um, I can tell you what I is. I think they should unlearn dropping points all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to get points back up, way up, way higher. We need to shrink armies down. That is step one of making this game faster. We have too many models on the table. You just talked about it with Stormcast, right? We, yeah. we need to re-baseline this game way to hell up like like i i would i would love to see forces shrink to about you know remember Tyler, when we flipped over to third part of the whole thing was we're yeah. making things more expensive because you don't have to pay for battalions yeah. anymore but now right. over time that all got chewed away and points have gone down and down and down and down and down and down and down <laughs> and now we have these massive yeah. armies i would love to see armies be 60 percent of the size they are right now literally mm -hmm. okay so I, I would just, I would love to see tons of things jump up. Yeah. Natalie, thank you. Fabian, that's the fellow's name. Yeah, plays corn, top eight LVO. Nice. Just an amazing game. Uh, yeah, that's that's really good. Uh, 
it was disconcerting seeing the Fusiliers War Scroll when that came out, where we were repeating the mistake of Sentinels. Uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I would really like to see that get left behind. Sure. You know, re-rolling, re-rolling uh, in order to fish for a modified sixes to hit doing mortal wounds. That's that's not a good thing for this game. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of different things that we could talk about here, but generally we're on the on an upward direction in the right direction. Yep, agreed. Uh, Charles F, we can all agree that a three-hour game is too long, or is a long game. Sorry, it's not too long. I guess sorry, the three-hour game is a long game. How long should a game of AOS take? Two and a half hours. Yep, it is two and a half hours. That is the correct number. It yep. should comfortably resolve within two and a half hours. That's it. Amen. Yeah. That, that's the answer. <laughs> yep. Like it's not uh, because that's what fits correctly and well and comfortably in a three tournament, th three game tournament day. Like that's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Charles F. 40K is the rule of three. You can only include three of a unit unless it's a battle line and then those are limited to six. Would you like to see something similar to that for AOS? No. No. I, I don't care. Like, sometimes spam happens. Okay. Spam doesn't happen. Like, a rule like this doesn't stop anything from happening. It just means that, okay, people max it out. Who cares? Like, it, it just, no, we don't need that. Uh, we've had a disagreement around this. I don't know what the ideal answer is here. I can tell you the uh, ideal answer. Mm. It's it's to put, if, if you think a unit should be limited and shouldn't be spammed, it should have mm. a setting that limits its inclusion at the unit specific level, not a broad core mm -hmm. game rule level. Again, so like okay. in yeah. the old world, you'll have units that are like one per thousand points, or three yep. per thousand points, or whatever, mm -hmm. because they're they're forcibly rarefied. So if you think you have a right. unit that's like that, just put that limiter on there. Like right now, all we have is single, or are you sorry unique? I apologize, unique, and go nuts. <laughs> sure. Those right. are the only settings, right? Yeah. We just put something in between unique and go nuts at the unit level, not at the core yes. game level. Because you want to allow for things to just be like, yeah, sure, most things are fine. Most things are fine. If you decide to take an army of just like all 20 packs of clan rats, I assure you nothing breaks. It's fine. It's terrible. It works. Okay. But zombies, or at least, I, I don't know the current state, but obviously they got whacked. But yeah, not too long ago, doing that, and quite a bit different. Yeah, some is... That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, we've talked a lot about it. I do think, it personally, it is an issue. Uh, I hate it on a number of levels. I, I get the idea of some armies should be themed armies. You know, here's my dragons, here's my all-pigs army. Okay. Yeah, like some of that makes sense to me, uh, but six Vexilors or even, I don't know, an army of 50 Castigators. Like, okay, it's a choice. Like, I'm not saying it's the wrong choice. It's just not for me. It's fine. And I would I would like there to be less of that in this ecosystem. Yeah, I mean... I don't think we have a massive problem with spam, but it, it's We don't. It, it usually happens when you can make it battle line. That's where it actually happens. And in which case, a limit of six isn't going to stop bad behavior. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Like, if I could have still got six steam tanks or six units of zombies or whatever, but I'm still making as many, like, that has stopped zero things. Six is spam. <laughs> okay. Right. And and when yeah, they I mean, be, and the battle line spam is always where the problem lies. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately, Vince, my argument on this, it's kind of, it's like, it, it's the, it's valuing differentiation, right? Uh, sure. I, th I think you know dynamism goes up when you have variety in a list. When so you, you should incentivize the army to be built that way. Yes. Y yeah, and and a lot of it comes back to let's have more armies that reflect model ranges. You know, yeah. more of a model range rather than yeah spamming zombies in an army that has a bucket of war scrolls. Yeah, th th this falls like into my like ounce of prevention thing. Again, you can do it. The reason I don't want it as a core rule is because I think it just doesn't need to exist. It doesn't yeah. need to exist. It's only mm. there if you if you're it's a pound of cure when you're making bad design. One, make better design choices. Two, think about it in advance and put it into the book and limit it with some number if you think it's going to be if you want it to be constrained. That's it. 
Yeah. yeah. We did this for the history of Warhammer. Like there were units that had right. X limit per what per Y or something like that throughout the entire history of Warhammer. It's not like it's yeah. weird. Okay. Uh, so all right. we could we could just do as Pat Noon says, and everybody just play Highlander list. I mean, Absolutely. that's there the you world go. Be a better solved better place. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Charles F. Vince has been critical of tournaments and competitive play. I, have I been critical of everything? Apparently, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. What is this? What is this coming from? I go to like five tournaments a year. Uh, it's not. It's not as many as a lot of people, but I don't know. It's a good number. Like it's as much as my schedule will allow. You didn't, you didn't get the memo. Tom's the positive one on this show. You're the oh, grump. Nowadays. I'm the negative Nancy. Yeah. Okay. Has he ever considered running a GT? Hell no. Uh, and how might his event differ from a normal GT? I it wouldn't because I would never run it. I have zero interest in being a tournament organizer. That is real and very hard work, and I do not have the time. I have three jobs already, man. I don't need a fourth. And that's, like, very hard work. I have undying respect for TOs. That you haven't seen at GTs that you would like to see? That anything that comes to mind that I, I could be interesting? Nope. Variants. Not really? That's it. Variants. Right, that, that is literally my answer, right? I want to see the TOs... Yeah expression of the game whether it's you having your right. awards for like the highlander lists whether it's nashcon right. and running two lists right the two list format herner's mm -hmm. holy events and the the you know very weird sort of narrative structure that he has whatever mm -hmm. right like just i love it when when tos kind of do things that make the tournament interesting in their own that's what it comes down to yeah so cool i just okay. i i have no specific thing Go nuts. Share, 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 that, share that, Gareth. Get on that, Gareth. Uh, high variance. Uh, deep lack of standardization. Let's, Correct. Let's go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yes. Uh, Letharanak. Or Letharanak. I don't know. Vince, personal question. How do you manage a full-time career running the most consistently updated channel on YouTube, Snarling Badger, teaching classes, painting, and playing AOS? Um, sure. Here is the answer. I live an incredibly regimented, structured life. I wake up, I do the same thing every single day on each day of the week at certain times. I subtract all choice from my life that I possibly can. I eat the same lunch. I drink the same drinks at the same time of every day. I work out at the exact same time every day. I have certain exact set times set apart for work, certain times set apart for videos, for class, for teaching, for everything my schedule is regimented like the the uh you know the military has nothing on me okay and and that is how like that's how i manage it and i subtract anything that is a decision that i don't need to be a decision is gone that's gone like remove in in the absence of choice is bliss that is what i will say <laughs> there you go okay uh Colonel Cabbage. Here you go. Here you go, Tyler. Mm. I was excited to see this mm -hmm. one from, from Colonel Cabbage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The schemes you created were written for AOS 1 2. How would you reapproach them for AOS 3 or 4? Um, okay. Tyler. We haven't really talked about this. Yeah. 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 For AOS 3, I think we legitimately would need to change almost nothing other than to update some wording. Yeah. Honest answer. I think they're fine. Like, there's there's wording changes that would need to happen because of a couple of sure. changes, but other than that. Yeah, I looked at the document a few months ago. I, th I think you're generally right. A lot of I did the same thing, actually. Well. I brought it up and I was looking over it, yeah. 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 And, uh, and it would, yeah, you would just replace the battle tactics system. I think you could keep the Grand Strats if you wanted to, and you would just swap in the scheme for the battle tactics system, right? Mm -hmm. If you yeah. were doing it for 3.0 yeah, yeah. at a tournament. Yeah, you're trying yeah. to complete a scheme. Like, it would just, you don't use battle tactics, you just use a scheme. Uh, Grand Strats are yeah. gone too, because it's effectively kind of in the middle ground of both. Kind right? of the, yeah. So you could do it. It's a little yeah, closer to Grand Strat, but I, I would just jettison the battle tactics and try to do your scheme. Yeah. 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 At 4.0, who knows? I guess we'll see. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping sure. that, that battle tactics becomes, or Grand Strats or whatever, I'm hoping they become something more like schemes, honestly. <laughs> In uh, 4.0. Um, Cure Dynamic. 
When going to a tournament, what is your go-to snack to bring along? Well, my answer is none. I don't snack. I do not eat outside of prescribed mm. meal times. That's another thing. Like I eat only twice a day during the week and once a day on the weekends, and I only eat at very specific times, and so on and so forth. So uh, the worst meal of the day is dinner because I have to talk to my wife and we have to come to a consensus about what to eat, which is always terrible because that means there's actually a choice. Um, mm. There was a time this last year where she was gone for like two weeks like she was on a, she went on a long vacation for almost two weeks i just was yeah. like fantastic no choice no choice paralysis i ate basically the same dinner every day it was wonderful um like I, I varied on set days of the week and i'm good to go i know exactly what i'm doing <laughs> when uh what about you tyler do you got a snack do you got a go-to snack uh whatever my friends have on hand that i might enjoy vince again it's all part of the collective sure it's all just just sharing if you need a good answer, it's obviously beef jerky. Doesn't spike your insulin, gives you a good protein boost, good energy. So there you go. Yep. Yeah. I, the only thing that I've ever deliberately brought on my own is like granola. Uh, it's boring granola bars. I love I love me a good granola bar, but yeah, I don't don't really have anything set. Uh there you go. Uh once a day, once on Saturday, once on Sunday. So seven. So seven. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Dan B, would you run Belfanos with Kurnoth Sword Scythes plus Bugs or an Oaken Brow with an assortment of Tree Lords? I believe this one, Tyler, is for you. Yeah, let's see. I would do Kurnoth Sword Scythes and Bugs over Oaken Brow, but I mean, certainly playable in that. Uh, friend Ryan Cabin ran Oaken Brow with Belfanos and a bunch of different Tree Lords over the weekend. Uh, Dan, check out the latest rtt discussion from jordan on season of war jordan has been going through now like four different videos of his iterative list building uh through four different GT rtts and his latest one is really good so he's got the most efficient shooting option one of the most efficient shooting options in order as allies two by ten reavers i don't have a, they don't hold a candle to the adjudicators i mean we'll, we'll get to that of course i mean we, if course. we're honest here but you know they're they're pretty good so uh, Dan, check that out. It's a great list. It's, uh, I think, addressing a number of the things you need to address for combined damage and for kind of leveraging the, the right set of tools for doing well with Sylvaneth. Uh, but yeah, all is equal, sword size, and bugs. Uh, I would I would lean in that direction. I mean, uh, Sylvaneth are a very Judicators at 200, list. perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Just right there. It's right <laughs> on the line. Balanced. Oh, uh, just enjoying the clickbait today from multiple yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, people right doing... yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Um, Mir said, Vince, what do you normally have for lunch? My standard lunch is two. I have a uh, Greek nonfat plain Greek yogurt, uh, two spoons, two tablespoons of that, and then mm. a the high protein, 0% fat, zero whatever. A uh, cup of Oikos Greek yogurt. I mix the two together with some fresh blueberries and some blueberry flax granola. I'm very specific about my granola. It cannot have nuts in it of any kind because I'm allergic to all nuts. Mm -hmm. And it cannot have, uh, I have to minimize added sugar because yeah, that's just a, that's just ruins basically a healthy meal. So I get the one, I get the, there's a very specific granola I buy that does not have much in the way of any added sugar or anything like that. And then a couple of tablespoons of that mixed in. That's my lunch. It's a small bowl of, of that. So there you go. It's a very nice lunch. Uh, extremely he high is. protein, no carbs, keeps you going. Or very low carbs. Uh, Cygnus, that was confirmed a long time ago, buddy. Catch up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, Dinos, what is wrong with Iron Jaws? I mean, what's not wrong with Iron Jaws? Um, how can they be yeah. fixed? They're an actual competitive army. Boy, they are one of the losingest armies right now, you know? Shout out to Marco, Marco Hernandez, I think, uh, from Lone Star G2. Dude, he went 4-1. Yeah, old school, Iron Jaws, a bunch of pigs, one cabbage. It was great. But yeah, no, absolutely. They're doing terrible right now. Yeah, I mean, it is because the your main guy, the cabbage, hits like a feather, basically. Yeah. Um, you cannot rely on casting a spell to like teleport him. Your one trick of movement, of super movement, is stopped by anybody who has chaff. Your army does not actually have like much in the way of decent damage once you wander out of War Chanter range, and you have mm. basically one. You've got one gear, which is be decently fast and then hit in melee decently hard with no mortal wounds. It's like all rent, right? Like yes, you've yeah. sort of got Zograk if you get that off and you have that guy, but once you send forth the pig missile with Zograk's bonus, that's it. 
and then it's only on sixes, right? Hope that you can double double somebody, ideally round two and round three. Yep. Or or maybe just round you know the the classic bottom of round one. I don't think uh, you can kill enough. Double. I think you have to kind of. Yeah. I think you have to play it a little bit, kinda chew a couple small things up, and then right. hope for the double two into three. Yep. Two into three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've never seen an army dude more uh, tip on that round two and round three double. Like yep. that is all iron jaws. <laughs> it's just it's yeah. such a mono dimensional army. It's got no tricks, no nothing. Yeah. Like the joke about playing fair warhammer. I mean, yes, they have funny movement tricks and in, in, in like yeah. you but it's like it's the most obvious trick ever because you can also just stop yeah. it. Just move near them. Right. Then they can't move again. Right. right. It's just like it's it's very easy to 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 shut that off. With like one chat yeah. unit that ends up twelve inches away from most of their army, and suddenly Mighty Destroyers turns off, and like, well, that's it. There, there goes your only right. trick. <laughs> yeah, and then new War Scrolls we talked about at the time. They didn't really put enough on the table, you know, enough different tools, um, optionality, you know, variants in the way that Belthanos did, for example, that we discussed, or even sure. Ionis. Uh, it's just, yeah, it was a lot of mostly a lot of the same previously. I'd be curious to see how the the big pigs are now with the momentum change. Yeah, I need to talk more with Don, one of our, uh, one of our, one of my friends locally. Uh, Don's been running a bunch of big pigs. He just got back from Lone Star. I, I haven't met with him yet to find out how that went. But anyway, yeah, he's been trying to make that work. So a I little think better, the, no still game. not great. The medium pig is the best, uh, is what it comes down to now with the momentum <laughs> change. So gotcha. Yeah. Um, Ghost Mutton is Snarling Badger hiring now or in the future? No, not right now. Mm. In the future, I don't know, man. Who knows what could ever happen? Uh, I mean, for now, it's all Adam and I. And unrelated, could you remind me where the like button is? Absolutely, hit that like button. It's right down there under the screen. You can just hit that easily, and we love it when you do. Um, Dinos, what's the future look like for the show? I don't know. We want to get some cool guests this year. I don't think I. I yeah, I don't. I don't have any great desire to to make any huge changes. You know, we've done the same segments more or less for like almost for come. We're in our. We're in. We're coming up on our. You know, next year will be our tenth anniversary, mm -hmm. and. I don't have any great need to change it. I mean, I don't know. Johnny Carson was on the air for what, like 30 years doing the same segments and having Ekman sit next to him and go, ha ha, you know, like that's, I don't know. He seemed like he did all right. So that's cool. You got anything you want to change Tyler? Longer we shows? To... Longer shows would be great. We've had way too many shows under two hours. It's not, it sucked to be honest. So we need to get this show into a podcast form. I would love to be able to go on walks and actually catch up on some of these Tom shows that I missed. That's a good change. We could look at that. We could look at taking this and putting it onto a podcast platform. That 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 is actually yeah. not an impossible thing. It's extra work, yeah. but we could look at it. Um, yeah. The, um, I will say uh, that Tyler, you'll be happy to know. I was looking at some recent show mm. analytics, and there was a pretty yeah. direct correlation. Now, now this isn't. This is not causation this is correlation between the shorter shows got less views than the longer shows okay uh, i was totally convinced you were trying to break my heart you're gonna go the other way no no, no. oh my god the longer shows Listen. got more views now again tyler correlation hear, that, hear my words because there are other things that correlate there, too. Like, for example, the longer okay. shows tend to be about more interesting topics that more people want to know about at that moment. But nonetheless, right? here we are. Don't get fancy. You <laughs> are, this is amazing. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. This, this is a great show tonight. Let's go. Five hours. Right. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, yeah, I think I think that's the kind of stuff we, we, we'll, we'll look at. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I would love to hear... Yeah, if people have comments or stuff they want to see us change. Yes. Do I need a cool background? Think... <laughs> <laughs> like, do I need to do I need to get some colored gel lights behind me, like every other YouTuber uh, or whatever? Like, should I do that? Soundboard. Yeah. Uh, get some. Get, yeah, yeah we should get a soundboard. That'd be well. fun. It'd be fun to have a soundboard, right? Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm jealous. Whenever I watch Haywood streams and everything that he's got, uh, he's got those little pop ups uh, and stuff. Those are super cool. I do love those. Yeah, uh, we need uh, what what would be good for the future of the show. So we've been a little too lazy of late about getting a broader diversity of voices on. I'll say, uh, not just people who can come on and tell us we're idiots, uh, but I mean that's it's a low bar. Useful. That's <laughs> sure. easy. 
<laughs> it's it's very useful hearing, yeah, you know, different perspectives, uh, filling in blind spots, that sort of thing. So, yeah, did anybody have any thoughts, ideas on that where we might have blind spots? And yeah, I'm always interested in that. Yeah, if you're watching now or you're watching watching this back later, honestly, first of all, thank you for making it two hours and 40 minutes into this of us just <laughs> answering rants and questions. Yeah. Um, but secondly, if anybody has any thoughts on, on, you know, things they'd like to see, I, I'm, I am all ears. I'm, I'm not, there's no way do I think we've like reached the mountaintop here. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we've got a huge list of show ideas. Like when we talked about recently, we want to do, we decided to wait on fourth edition is we want to, you know, get someone like Gavin on where we can run through if Gavin would be, uh, hopefully willing to come on the show where we absolutely know who he is. <laughs> and we'll be glad and sung his praises for years. Uh, come on and tell us how to beat all these different armies in the game. Uh, I think that would be a great resource. I don't know. That might be, I mean, that would be a six hour show. Maybe if we try to do that, we could probably do that pretty efficiently, efficiently for us. Going through all the different armies, right? How to beat them, how to compete against them. Things like that. I like, I like this to do a little bit more of stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Ken B, can you say one nice thing about Fire Slayers and what would it take to get you to pay a play a full army of Fire Slayers? Uh, I'll answer the second question first. Independent wealth. If you can pay me enough money that I no longer need to work for the rest of my life, okay, I will happily pay and play an army of Fire Slayers. I'll set the bar at two million dollars. Okay, that's not actually mm -hmm. true financial independence in the modern economy, but it's a incredible amount of money. So I feel that's reasonable. Okay, mm -hmm. so for for the low cost of two million dollars, I will paint and play Fire Slayers for a full year. There you go. That's my that's my my promise to you. So start the crowdfunding campaign now. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I say a nice thing about Fire Slayers? Yes. That recent Flame Seekers unit was legitimately awesome, and I like a lot of the design in that unit. I thought that, yeah. like, I don't love all of them. Some of them are completely derpy and goofy, but, like, four models out of that unit I did think were legitimately cool. Mm. I still, I've kind of convinced myself that we are going to get a Fire Slayers expansion with that as the foundation for a new, like, updated cool line of models in 4.0. And, like, I don't know, if, yeah, maybe not the, the first two years of 4.0. That's probably being a little too dreams but yeah obviously we're not going to get a whole lot right this year sure. we know how it works yeah, yeah. but yep. yeah uh nick r how can the game encourage list diversity without that meaning leaning into skew so often building something different means leaning super hard into a single direction right like i'm going to be different i'm using all of this skew right yeah yeah mm -hmm. just sorry yes two million usd sorry infinite dm yes united states dollars not Jeffrey's bucks. Yeah, yeah, not rubles. Yeah. But back to this question. What do you think, Tyler? I think your award oh, at a tournament's a good a good first step, like your Highlander yeah. award. It's a great option. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean I liked your idea from earlier of uh, a midway point between where we are at the moment in terms of lack of options to address potential spamming issues. Uh, something along those lines would help. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, so, so obviously like there are hard limiters, like what I talked about, like, like you mentioned, right. That's a hard limiter, right. Yeah. There's also soft incentives. So having more armies of renown functionally in the game that encourage different units to be utilized or to be utilized in different ways, as long as they themselves don't get skewy and spammy. Right. Mm -hmm. So more armies of renown, kind of how they work in the old world, where it encourages different mixtures of units being used in different ways and gives different units different abilities that opens up new avenues. That's a way to say, like, OK, like potentially what we're seeing with Cthulhu's crone host or whatever, you know, I, I don't I don't remember her name, but, you know, what I'm talking about like potentially what that seems to be pointing at. Right. Where it's like, here's this side of the army and this is the kind of standard way. But here's another leader that makes you want to play these other group of underused units and opens up a new app in a way. Bell Thanos is, is yeah. doing this to something. Yeah, great. absolutely. Right. right. So Yeah, that's good. Another thing that comes to my mind, which we again we've discussed this to death, but one of the structural issues with 3.0, say particularly early on with the battle tomes, is that we had sub factions. Sorry. We had sub factions. Oh, you're good. No, I wasn't doing that. I was trying to get my camera oh, okay. focused. It's making me angry. Oh gotcha. <laughs> uh dude, we had too many battle tomes where the, each sub faction said, "Hey, spam this unit. Hey, spam yeah, that yeah. unit." 
Yeah, right? exactly. Um, ditch sub factions would be a great first first step. Just we don't need them anymore. I've, I mentioned this on a show before. I just don't think we need sub factions anymore. Mm. I really don't. I think armies of renown of the future, not sub factions. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I must have missed that. Interesting. I think it was on a show with Tom. I mentioned it, but yes, sub factions are so odd. Like, look, four out of five times they're just spam mm. this unit. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Well, they don't have to be. They don't have <laughs> to be. Seen. But it's hard. Like, alternates. they're not going to make eight sub factions that aren't spam this unit to some degree because you can't fit it yeah. up into one rule. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of some of the better examples recently. You know, I think uh, Soul Blight. Uh, Soul Blight has done a pretty good job, I think. Of an army that's never that they... seen spam for sure. Uh, sure, but even yeah. But at least that, you know, Legion of Blood, Legion of Night, having, like, everything's seen play for the most part. Viracos, sure, it's not entirely addressing it, but, uh, I, yeah, it's certainly better on that front. Uh, I mean, I think the other answer is just better internal balance out of the gate, right? Focus more on internal balance. Like, part of this is just literally at the design level. If, if a sure. broader selection of units are interesting and work together in more interesting synergistic ways, not just from printed rules, but from an actual game effect... Right, like by combining simply what unit A is doing with what unit B is doing, not anything that's printed on the scroll, not unit A gives unit B plus one to hit, just like unit A is doing something that then allows unit B to be more functional, right? Right. The more of that you have going on, the the more you will simply see diversity in lists. It's that easy, right? And in fact, yeah, the me... less you tie it to hard written rules where like A bonuses B the more they can then combine it. Like, actually, A still works okay with C as well, right? And and so yeah. on and so forth, so. And on the whole Highlander thing, you know, highly biased, if they're... Uh, so I haven't had that much pushback on the Highlander concept. I mean, one question would be, why would you get pushback on that? Uh, a good friend of mine, he has had pushback on it. Like, he doesn't like it. I'm actually not entirely sure what elements that he doesn't I, I think maybe part of it is maybe he feels like it's i need to just ask him this week maybe he feels like it's incentivizing something that i should not necessarily be incentivizing i don't know uh but if there were one award that i feel it would be a net plus in the community it you know to have at a lot more events mm -hmm. it would be highlander I, sure. I think that would be that would be really fascinating and, and really good for for the ecosystem there are some armies that fall out of Highlander as, oh, this just looks like a corn army, right? Oh, yeah. this just looks like, I don't know, maybe, yeah. Like some armies write hyper, you know, very competitive uh, 5 0 oriented lists just by the nature. But yeah, anyway, I I think it, it does so much for dynamism and um, yeah, I don't have to repeat the gospel. Yeah, of that yeah, no, no, that's fine. A couple from the chat yeah. here real quick. Um, do you think the four point, Colt Sphinx, do you think the four point release could be cities versus Skaven and maybe cities could be updated dwarves or elves? No, I do not. I wish it was. It should be, but it'll be Stormcast. It'll be Stormcast versus Skaven. That's just what it will be. Um, Jim uh, Jim Crimmins, why doesn't Combat Patrol style option exist with AOS? It will. It's Spearhead. I mean, that's what they've been leading up to with the Spearhead. You're seeing the new releases of these Spearhead boxes. That's going to be the Combat Patrol for AOS that launches with Fourth. Like again, it's the most. I don't know that, but come on, we know that. Like it's just it's written on the on the. I've never seen something more telegraphed, right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, Nick R. This is a this is a fun mm. question, Tyler. I like this one. Mm. I love I love when we get these nice curveball questions. These are fun. Yeah. <laughs> What's an amenity that you love to see at tournaments that often gets overlooked? Mm. What, you, what, what, is what is an amenity you like to see there, Tyler? Uh, I, I will tell you my mm. answer. Yeah. Easy access to a good restaurant or restaurants for lunch or dinner. Yeah. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a second one. You ready? Uh huh. Space yep. in between each goddamn play space where I can actually <laughs> set up my casualties and or my little army right. carrying case and or my extra junk. That is the greatest amenity you can ever have at a tournament when you have somewhere to sit your crap, and you are not butt to butt and five inches away from other people. Um, the couple yeah. tournaments that happened like during the later period of COVID was great because everyone was still very social distanced, and so tables were like really oh, spread apart. 
and right. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. We had room. You could spread <laughs> out. You could set your thing down. If something died, you could just be like, sure, move it over here off the table. Absolutely. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, this seemingly is a little one. Maybe it's not necessarily overlooked, but it's very important, I think, to have water readily available and mm. accessible at all times. I mean, especially for folks who may rely on that, you know, those who are diabetic, you know, like, I think it's really critical for tournaments to be thinking about things like that, you know, and, and, and doing whatever you can to, to help uh, on that front. So yeah, readily available water, like a, a bottle of water as part of the pack, part of whatever, the goodie bag. That's, I think that's really, really nice. Uh, what else? Gosh, there's so many that we, I like the... I mean, I'm sure many people one. would answer like an open, or not an open bar, but you know, a bar or something like that readily available um, where people can get drinks. I mean, I don't drink, so that's not really a thing that that means anything to me, but I'm sure most people like it. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of, yes, yeah, some mention, uh, give us side tables, of the by rolling carts just to make our own space at times. So I hate the infusion oh, yeah. of all the rolling carts. A couple of people thought of that, and now it's just <laughs> everywhere. And now it's just in these tight spaces. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't yeah. work. Like, I get it. I don't I don't begrudge people for, for doing it. I'm just saying, like, boy, does it, does it just make everything worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been to, yeah, proper air circulation. I've been to tournaments when the room is hot, and boy, does that suck. Uh, but that's often been, you know, that's what I'm here for. I love it. I like it hot. <laughs> sure. So. Uh, but okay, I'm gonna move on. But yeah, that's that's a good question. Absolutely. Uh, Travis B, what steps could a new player take to start playing competitively? I'm gonna give my three simple answers. I think this is actually pretty easy. One, play people mm -hmm. who are, play people who are better than you. Two, ask those people for feedback after the game as to what you did wrong. Okay, like, and have them help you and instruct you. And three, watch other people who play at high competitive levels in good bat reports like Season of War and stuff like that. And listen when they tell you the why of why they're doing what they're doing. And then, you know, interpret that into your own armies and choices you make. Yeah, yeah, that seems good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, listen to Miscast podcast. They've got tremendous content on this front. Yeah, that's divided into different series a bunch of bunch of places have great content but yeah they darren the owen jackson alex and company they especially come to mind with uh, the episodes that they've done um yeah i mean if you really want to get serious about it there's always onwards aos then again darren and others are involved in a whole bunch of competitive players across the world are, are involved in that as a coaching service but yeah uh, they do a bunch of cool things over there but yeah no that's yep. good Travis B, I keep hearing there's a new edition book supplement coming out. Should I continue to wait forever to join this game? No, we mentioned it. Just like figure out the army you want right now. Start doing test models. Yeah. Get your terrain ready. You know, whatever, whatever. Like there's plenty of things you can do now. It's just it's just you know, yeah, we're we we are in the twilight period of the edition. It's one of the challenges. It's one of the reasons Tyler and I decided to do this show right now. Because honestly, like, what are we gonna do? Revisiting an army? Yeah. It's like, oh, this is good for another <laughs> two months, and then you know, like, it just yeah. It, it's really hard for us to do content on on a lot of things we want to talk about at the very at sort of in the last waning three four months of an edition, right? Because it's going to become yeah. very soon. It's going the news is going to be all about the the new edition and stuff like that. And and frankly, after that, we're going to want to be breaking into like you know if there is indices, then we're going to be doing show after show after show of like <laughs> this army, that army, these armies, you know, and so yeah. on. So. Uh, all right. Uh, Travis B. This is a fun question. Hi, my name is mm. Local Power Gamer, and everyone hates playing me. What can I do to tone it down so everyone can have fun? Tyler, I, I have the perfect answer for this. Okay, I think. All right, excellent. Yeah, let's hear it. You're a power gamer, and you want to tone it down. You ready mm. for this? Okay. Mm. You need to play an army you are less familiar with. Okay. Not zero familiarity with, just less familiar with. It can't be the one you're like highly practiced with. And you need to make your list 10 minutes before you leave for the store or play the game or whatever. That's it. Yeah. You have 10 minutes to make your list. Okay. Right. That's it. That will decrease your power level considerably. Like, yeah. because That's you'll good. just make choices about what to pick. Like, take 20 minutes if you feel, if you're feeling saucy, right? Sure. Um, and you're you like it will just lower your power level. It's a great way to do it. 
Like, yeah. basically, play limited is almost what you're doing there. To make a magic reference for the fifth time. So, yes, this is definitely a thing. Uh, I know gamers who seem to be literally incapable of writing casual list, who also think that they're writing casual list, like who think that they're playing yeah, something casual, and it's not. Yeah, people, players who, not right or wrong, it's just the core DNA is their optimizers. And they cannot not optimize. That's why you got to shut everything. that off. You got to shut that off. Yeah. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah. If you just don't give yourself the time to optimize, you can't optimize. I see. Modern yeah. problems style yeah. require modern solutions. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can maybe try to have somebody else write your list. Sure. Uh, maybe somebody experienced. Yeah. Get like, yeah, just, hey, I want to play Crow Boys. Okay. Can you write write my list and write what you think would be a casual, more fun Crow Boys list that doesn't have three by six Bolt Boys in it or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Jim Crimmins, what Skaven faction are we rooting for in the launch box? My hopium is Clan Eshin. I think it'll be either Eshin or or, um, or Scryer. So, yeah. Mm. We've already seen a Scryer unit, so, like, but we don't know that for sure that's going to be anything to do with the launch box. Mm. David C., 3D prints, yay or nay for events and tournaments and why? Big yay. Big yay. Huge yay. All the way up, yay. No reservations whatsoever. As long as they're not 3D print complete knockoffs, like rescans of existing models, because that's just intellectual mm. theft. But like every other producer, like you want to, you know, like Clay Beast, excuse me, like Archvillain Games or Clay Beast Creations are great independent creators who are out there making cool models of their own and making them available to you either through their Patreon or through my mini factory or something for 3D prints. I say, hell yeah. Go nuts. Yeah. Absolutely. It's your army. It should look like how you want it to look. <laughs> Period. No one else owns your army. So uh, I, I do have some more, just so you know. You're not... Oh, I, oh, I know. Okay. Don't worry. Oh, uh, well, no, I have some that I didn't even send you that I would oh, love boy. to Oh, boy. We're not even... Tyler, We're doing. this is not all your questions. This is page one. Oh, amazing. All right, good. I was getting worried. David S., what was your first war game, strategy game, tabletop video game? I mean, I played video games before I played tabletop war games. So uh, probably Command & Conquer or StarCraft. Those would have been the ones that I was playing. Uh, the yeah. great Command and Conquer Red Alert, like that driving theme yeah. song of like that was absolutely that was my answer. Yeah, Command and Conquer one, but yeah, especially Red Alert, incredible. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then it, well, it was yeah, it was that I don't know what was first, right? It was it uh, Battle Masters. Battle Masters is is up there. That was very early for me. As, yeah, as I did play some Battle Masters. That's true. Yeah, I did do that. Yeah, if that uh, counts. Yeah, that's true. I did play Battlemasters before I played StarCraft or, or Warcraft. I guess original uh, recipe Warcraft, right? Warcraft 1, I, if that counts. Sure. Yes, that would have been the very first thing. Right. I played that over dial-up on my computer that had a 14-4 modem in it, and I dialed, called my friend directly, and we played like we played games over the internet. It was amazing. We could do that. So there you go. Yeah. I think you had to like type in their IP address or something. I don't remember. You could do it. You had to like direct connect to them. I don't remember exactly how it worked. I know a few years after that, we would do like eight game or eight computer. We'd all bring our computers to my buddy worked at a computer store and we'd all bring our computers mm -hmm. to this place called Software Gallery. And we'd set up like a token ring net, like a coaxial token ring network and play mm -hmm. like eight player Warcraft 2 games. So Nice. Did you ever go to any like cons or you know like Quake Con or anything? No, no. Uh, yeah, it's never that cool. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I never, I never played the the Dune video game that came out for Sega. My, I, I, I watched my buddy Dave play it some. He really liked it. Mm. Um, it's a shame because I really did love Dune, but um, like it was the same guy who I watched Dune with like all the time. We would we would watch. I wanted to watch Dune all the time. I just I loved the movie. I watched watched it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Usually we were chemically altered in some way when watching it. So there you go. Sure. Um, how is the new Snarling Badger game coming? Good. Tyler is editing right now, and Tom and I just finished development. Can you drop any hints on the setting? No. Uh, and what terrain will you need? You know, terrain, like <laughs> the things you would imagine. Uh, that are normally terrain. Mm. Um, what flavor is your is is my vape? None. It's like a it's like a basically neutral sort of mentholish flavor. 
There you go. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Apparently, uh, I look distressed. I can't. I can't be fidgety. Might might be the camera. Angle. No, it's just that question really got you there. That was that was the one. Oh, um, uh, okay. Gotcha. What about playing with unpainted models? I mean, if if it happens in your home table, it's fine. That's my answer to that question. But you know, try to paint your stuff. Just just try to paint your stuff. Like you you should be. I don't care if your models are unpainted as long as you're making progress. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's like doesn't have to be every week. Life happens, but you know, make progress. As long as I see progress over time, P over T, we're good. <laughs> That's the answer to that. Okay. How do you guys decide on an army color scheme? Well, Tyler, you picked yours because what? You just you really liked the image, right? You thought it was cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I really like the image, and uh, you know, boy, like this is a setup to make me feel guilty. In these last two questions, but it's fine. That's all right. Um. I'm in pro. I'm I'm working on it. You'll get there. We'll get Making there. Making progress. Got, that's the key. That critical thing is there's a hard deadline, and unfortunately, I'm not going to let you down. Sadly, if only I could let you down, it would make things a lot easier. But I can't. I believe so. in you, buddy. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, average Joe said Vince strikes me as a Protoss player rushing Dark Templars. No, I was, uh, I think I was mostly Terrans, honestly. Like, uh, I hear you, sir. I don't know. I love, I love Mm -hmm. battleships and tanks and stuff like that. I like things that go boom. Uh, Protoss were too finicky. So you, you you construct additional pylons, okay? I don't want to hear from you. All right. So, okay. Tyler, these are your last questions here Mm. that I've got. Uh, Derek H. How do you analyze what's working on the box art when you try to change up elements of the scheme and still have it feel good? Uh, I mean, I don't really follow the box art too closely. I think most of the time it's just like you're going to have elements that are usually kind of obvious and it's okay. You don't have to deviate from those. What I mean by that is like it's a steel hauberk. It's a leather belt. Like you can vary Mm. the color brown a little or the color steel a little, but that's more or less been decided for you. So what you're really talking about is like, do you want a blue cloak or a red cloak or a purple cloak, right? Like that's most of the choices you're making on on many figs. And so just, you know, pick the colors you like. It's like your thing with Stormcast, like is, are they made of, what what's this color? And then what's this color? Right. You know, right. like that's it. So yeah, I look at color plates for the army. Like you, you were looking at, you found that <clears throat> cool looking image of the army, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, yep. Just look at other people who've painted it and, and see what grabs you. Hmm. Derek H, how long many how long how many games would you say it takes to really get a feel for an army's playstyle? What do you think, Tyler? I mean, we have to do this a lot, right? Like oftentimes we have to be able to do this just from reading the book because we do a show. Right? Yeah. But for you to get I mean, really comfortable with like an army's playstyle, how many games do you need? So if I'm trying to so there's different levels of this for me. The level of, I think, what he's referring to here to get a feel for it. Probably about five games to get a good enough feel to, you know, three, two, four, one, 15 games. Uh, for me, like like with Legion of Night here, I, dude, I've gotten so many reps with Legion of Night. I, I could fill four hours talking about Legion of Night. Sure. Not that anybody would want to listen to that, but uh it's i'm still learning uh micro details and and high level plays concepts strategies sure. tactics with legion of night um i don't know 60 70 games in yeah sure and i and i've got a list you yeah, have notes of, of different situations you know like okay in these missions under these circumstances here's the potential play to deny surround and destroy uh here's etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah it just depends on what level you're talking about but yeah those are a few thoughts yeah, I, I agree. Like three to five. And then you just continue to learn stuff as you go. I agree. Yeah. Uh, Derek H., if you're at a tournament and you're unfamiliar with your opponent's army, what are the key things to ask them that aren't going to eat into your already limited time? Uh, sure. They're special tricks. What What are your weird tricks? Yeah. Okay. Like, what are your right. weird tricks that break the rules in big ways? Two, yeah. What do you have the ability to get into me turn one? What's kind of your maximum threat range for your units? Three, what are your big range threats? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, what are your special tricks, weird tricks is another way of saying what are the potential gotchas here. Yeah. 
you know, most most players, yeah, are <laughs> are not keen to lose a game when they get massively surprised, and it just has a a, a major shift or a major impact on the game. Uh, so yeah, like like Legion of Night again. Uh, I've been trying every single game. Uh, play transparently, ageless cunning, the counter charge, uh, Manfred's redeploy charge, and then of course swift form the teleport right in in each hero phase. As long as uh, they're not in combat, the vampire is not in combat. So yeah, just I, I think that's the ideal way to play Warhammer. Uh, to kind of operate transparently with with those things as much as possible. Agreed. Um, I, well, I, I don't get why, like, a friend of mine, he often... A friend of mine is not the highest information player. Uh, he had a rough time at a tournament recently. And I don't know, I don't get the hesitancy that he seems to have and others seem to have about these kind of questions. Because, yeah, it just feels like... It's just like, it's the 80-20 thing, right? You know, you just give me the 20% of the information that's going to cover 80% of, of relevancy yep. to this game. And it can happen very quickly. Sure. Um, all right. What would you look for in a successful battle report channel? Brevity, wit. Okay. Anything else? Nope. That's it. Those are my things. Uh, for me, at the you know, I've maybe have watched more battle reports than any other human alive over the last eight years. Sure. I've watched an ungodly number of battle reports. Uh, I, I, I do think there is a lot of space for high quality play remaining in the battle report space. Uh, there are still a lot of games. Yeah. That just, I mean, there's value right in showing games where things don't go right. Like Jordan and Rich will play a game where something weird happens and then that game will get skewed and it'll be over by round two or something like that. Right. Like there can be value in that, but uh, this is this is gonna this is probably sounding elitist. I'm I'm not trying to sound elitist with with this. I'm just trying trying to say that I I think battery there's so much opportunity still for battle report content to showcase high quality, well played games. Period. Yeah, yeah. yeah that does not happen enough, right? Sure. And for the love of God, roll your dice. Uh, having watched thousands upon thousands of games, Vince. I've, have I told you this before? My one conspiracy that I believe in life is that there is an art to dice rolling and it is not entirely random and you're not going to be able to tell me otherwise because I've watched people who don't know how to roll dice and the results show it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. They they will flip a dice, flick a dice. You, they're, It's like the, the dice have souls, Vince. They can feel what you're feeling oh i give them a shake and a good a good roll i get it i understand i, you and have I to believe show you. them that you, i was depressed that last care. night during our D D game and then i rolled like a one then a two then a three because i just wasn't happy with what's going on and yeah i was like huh eh, that's what you get yeah yeah it's, it's what, what you happens. get absolutely you yep. get what you deserve when you when you do that to your dice uh Stop it. and then thomas b final question what makes an event worth traveling to uh a good to and hmm. uh a good to and you know a good group of players who you know are going to be there that's it like good community good to like the to is going to put together a pack that is them that looks fun and if the to if the pack looks fun to you and the people that are going to be there are fun to play against which is basically most everything like because this community is awesome uh then you're going to have a good time like that's my simple answer natalie i feel called out sorry natalie uh yeah, yeah, that about sums it up. For me, I think like you, events that are doing something different. Yeah, exactly. I, I that, love events that have something that's... interesting going on. Put out a cool pack. Yeah. If the pack is cool, I'm there. Yeah, yeah, that's highly attractive. Just a couple of quick ones from Twitter that like came in too late for me to, to actually answer. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's see here. Um, Manzak, uh, who does incredible sculpting and, and conversions and stuff, said... Mm -hmm. Do you work on hobby collaborations? If so, when can we start? I can work on the idea and conversion. I could do the sculpting or help with it. Man, Zach, I'd, I'd be honored to paint something you converted anytime, like 100%. Your stuff is absolutely exceptionally beautiful and amazing. He's a, he's a, he's so good. Uh, what tip do you have to better understand what type of player you are and choose the correct army? We've done a couple of shows on psychographic profile and stuff like that, and I really do think that's the answer. Like, you've got to find the one that actually matches your psychographic profile. I And, and yeah. I don't think it's the look. 
I don't like. I think that matters some. I don't think it's even the play. Those are going to change. I think it's it's there. There's something deeper, and I think it is that psycho psychography. Yeah. There you go. That was just yeah, a couple extra questions. Sense. One one last thing, dude, that comes to mind on what makes a good battle report channel. I, I do love channels that have uh, time and space for learnings. You know what was learned in oh, the sure. game. Again, that's just something, right? That season of war has done really well. Um, their, their latest format amplifies it even more, where you get a feel for uh, what Ridge is like as a player, or what Fabian, that uh, Blades of Corn player, is like as a player. I find that fascinating. You know, like you get to know the person and their thinking and decision making. That's that's all very useful. But yeah, space for um, for reflection, for for learning. Uh, I wish more battle reports would would do that kind of in a in a, in a meaningful structured way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pat Noon said, "How does the spike player shop for an army? They don't. They just go buy corn. I don't understand what we're talking about. What's the what's the <laughs> what's the issue? Um, what is it? A, why why have we all decided that corn is the strongest army in this game? If corn is the strong, I feel like this is not about experience. Dinos will appreciate this. If corn is the strongest army in this game, we are in one of the greatest places we've ever been in. No, they're they're not. It's just I'm saying it's the spikiest army. Oh, oh, oh okay, all right, fair. Yeah, okay. they're not the, they're not the strongest army in the game. I think they're a good army. Like I think they're competitive and stuff, right? They're, they're like a great player playing corn has a good chance in right. any matchup. Um, sure. No, I just think they're I just think they're the spikiest army. That's all. Corn and the spikiest army. Mm -hmm. Why? I think they're the most is... spike army. Why? I think they're the most under your control. You have the like spike wants control of all sort of randomness, and corn has the most control of that. Interesting. Okay. All right. Because Dropped of blood nice bomb here. you benefit from their loss. You benefit from your loss through murder rolls and things like that. Your units, uh, like your blood tithe, is a very powerful resource. Your murder lust means you can generally you have a lot more control over movement than a lot of other things might allow. All that yeah. kind of stuff. So, it's not yeah, a bad thing. It's, like it's good to have that sure. as, as an army. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's interesting. Yeah, that, yeah. That, there's a fair amount of that going on. Yeah, you're right. Like in the hands of people who really know what they're doing, it's it, it's an exceptional army, and uh, you can optimize for. Yeah. Uh, Again, we've, Rich sent me some questions. Sean sent some questions in. I'm going to have to get to these. You so ready? Many. So many. Future future episode. For now, we've gone for more than three hours, Tyler. So I feel we've we've satisfied our... Give me, uh, give me one from Sean and one from Rich. Go. One from Sean. And one from Pete. Oh, good God. Go. <laughs> one from Sean. All right. Uh, real quickly while I'm doing that. Uh, Pete, give me an easy meal to add to the weeknight cooking rotation. That's from Plastic Crack, Peter. Give me an, an easy, easy meal, to, meal add to, to add to the the weeknight. Yeah, sure. Weeknight cooking uh, rotation. Go to a local producer of a good cheese. Like we we I live by Amish country, so we go out to Amish country every few months, and we get a nice vacuum sealed fresh cheese, locally made for directly from the cows that are there. Oftentimes, it might be raw because it's, you can do that because they don't have to sip it to. The normal laws here in the U.S. You go get yourself some fresh salami or something like that, and you buy yourself a box of uh, something like Triscuits, a very simple cracker, something that has no, no extra nonsense in it. It's just a cracker, like there's there's mm. no other sugar or nonsense. It is just that. Um, maybe get yourself a little honey, and uh, there you go. That's your dinner. You have yourself some cheese, a little bit of crackers, a few pieces of salami, maybe some honey on some of the, that cheese. Uh, you're eating like a Roman emperor, and it's one of the greatest, simplest meals you can have. Uh, it's fantastic. There you go. No thought, yes. easy peasy. All your proteins you need with just a little bit of fiber to keep you regular. Ridge, what new army do you want to see next? What new army do you want new to see army. next? Besides, besides a Skaven relaunch? Um, mm -hmm. Malarian's Dark Elves. Like, that's the easy answer. Yeah. I, I like... We've danced around this for so long now. We've just been edging on this forever. Let's just let's just get it over with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because when you get that army, Tyrion shouldn't be too far behind. So sure. yeah, two for one. That's that's the answer. Sean, whether to go low drops. Uh, my current issues are bigger ones. Whether to go low drops or high drops. I was doing the former, but I've switched to the latter, high drops, and I found it to be so much better. All that benefits you get from battalions. Plus, being able to counter deploy, it helps to have Bellacore laugh out loud. Yeah, I Low mean, I, I play a lot of high drop armies, so for me, like yeah. I'm I'm here for the extra magic items and and stuff like that. 
Um, that's yeah. absolutely my my pick. I, I tend to not care about the low drop game uh, unless I'm playing an army that needs to be in that position. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sean, on principle, high drops. Uh, not always playing a high drop army. Been playing a four drop army, and it feels like playing a ten drop army. Sure. God, there are so no, many. No, either go to all the drops and stop it, or or be one. That's it. There's two choices yeah. one and 14. That's, That's it. Pretty much, it feels like that, man. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like three out of four games I play, the player is one or two drops, period. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's wild. Yeah. Yep. Um,. Uh, by the way, uh, da, 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 da. Haiti said add some grapes to that. 100%. You can get a fresh fresh grapes. Oh, wonderful. Like, grapes are another great thing. Almost no calories. Delicious. Like, a good pack of fresh green or, or, or whatever grapes are just absolutely wonderful. Yeah, great, great, great addition to the meal. Very juicy. Uh, okay. Let's see. Is there anything else we want to answer before we get out of here? What's going to happen to the AOS Old World Shared Armies or BOC getting kicked out of AOS? No idea. I mean, I don't. I don't think so, but I mean anything's possible. Who knows? They could just say, eh, I guess both just we'll let it we'll let it ride." I think there's some pretty big mm-hmm. Beast of Chaos fans in the in the in the AOS, you know, sort of ecosystem over there. So, mm-hmm. uh, so there you go. Okay, cool. Did we answer all of the questions? No, but you're you're being annoying and insisting that we stop this show. So. Yes, Fine. after three hours and fifteen minutes, where I've got early morning meetings. We do have to eventually cut the <laughs> cut the feed. That's right. That's right. I'm being annoying. Yes, I am a jerk. Everybody, it's all me. Absolutely. Do you have one more question you want to end on, Tyler? Let's switch it up and just say thank you for indulging me. I, I appreciate you as a friend, as a content creator, as an influencer. Oh yeah, that's as me. a human being. Yeah, you're such an influencer. And this has been fun. I hope everybody enjoyed this. I feel like I blathered on quite a bit. I look distressed at times while you're just looking cool over there, blowing smoke out of your nose. Yep. But it was a good time. This was great. Thank you all for all your amazing questions. We'll do this again in the future. I actually really like this, uh, mm. the, doing this as a thing. Um... Yeah, hit like before you go, all those fun things. I think it is more than that cold. It's just like it doesn't register for some reason. YouTube gets funny in live mode. Um, but um, the next time we do this, by the way, we'll have to do one where it's just like literally ask us anything. We'll get Tom on. And it has to be, it cannot be AOS or hobby related. Like it has to be stuff about us. <laughs> just so we make people ask us weird questions. We have to confess live and on, on stream. Right. Uh, oh, for on. everything, everything in our lives, yeah, absolutely. Um, but this was gonna, great. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna blow some minds. Oh, I'm sure, absolutely. <laughs> uh, this was great. Thank you all for the amazing questions. Hit like, hit subscribe, do all those fun things that make all those dings, absolutely. Uh, if you want to support the channel, hey, just clicking those buttons really does so. Share it with somebody. Tell somebody about the show. There's links down there. You can pick up your hobby supplies. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It gives the show a nice kickback. We really appreciate it. You can check out our games. Uh, from Snarling Badger. Those are all linked down there as well. Pick up a new skirmish game. If you're looking for something to do before AOS 4 theoretically launches, uh, then, you know, why not pick up a new game to play for a couple months? It's one skirmish game. And, uh, uh, you know, otherwise, there's also our Patreon focused on hobby review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, you can also hit the merch store down there. Pick up a shirt with Tyler's little guy on it. Be Team Tyler. Be cool. Support Tyler. It'll make you way cooler. Uh, you can walk up and have Tyler sign your shirt at Adepticon. I think that would be amazing. Uh, at least one person has to have Tyler sign a shirt at Adepticon. So, with that, everybody, thank you so much. Tyler, thank you as always, brother. You're you're wonderful. I love you. I uh, appreciate you. And uh, I'm always honored to What time this you said you love me? I do love you. Absolutely. I appreciate you. 100%. I love you too, buddy. All right. For all of you out there, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>